What meeting was this meeting that was in here before us for? Is everybody here for the uh, for the cemetery? Yes. This whole group? Okay. <coughs> I'm gonna send her on a sign in sheet then. Sure. If you guys could please. So we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the permanent building committee. This the, the focus of this meeting won't be exclusive to the cemetery. I imagine that uh, that most of you people are here because of the cemetery work that we're doing. So um, we'll just go ahead and cut to the chase. The only update we have relative to the cemetery is that the town is in the process of negotiating a contract with an owner's project manager to continue the process of evaluating prospective sites. And that's as much as I have to offer. So Are there that, any questions? That, oh, is that a feasibility study? It is, yes, it is uh, the continuation of an internal feasibility analysis that this organization did. And is there a cost to that feasibility study? Yes. Can you divulge that? The amount of money allocated and approved to town meeting for the hiring of an OPM and the beginning of the design process was $50,000. I believe that was last two town meetings ago, last town meeting. I think it was last. Last. Yeah, last, yeah, town, last, town. last town meeting. So two town meetings ago, there was actually 200000 allocated. We ended up not getting around to conducting that business. So we we asked for a reallocation of 50000 from this last fiscal year's budget to hire an OPM and begin the process of writing RFSs for designer selection. Do you have a time frame of when you think this project needs to start and finish? The, the OPM selection? Or that the designer selection, or the design process, or construction, or kind of uh, kind of all encompassing. The OPM selection process is, uh, you know, assuming that the negotiations and the contract process completes within the next couple of weeks, we'll go into a process of creating um, quest for proposals for design services in conjunction with our OPM for designer selection. That'll probably take a month or two, and then that. Solicitation will go out into the public domain. There'll be responses, there'll be interviews, there'll be a, another negotiation uh, with whoever the selected designer is. That could take another month, and then the design process would start. I wouldn't expect that that would happen until probably after the next <coughs> uh, the November town meeting. Has the requirement already been established for the need for talking about design? Right. But before design right. is Could we get people to identify themselves for the record? Uh, certainly. Yes. Uh, if you if you have a question, if you can just uh, say your name, where you live, so that because um, RCTV is actually recording all this. Sure. My name is Tom Dyer. I live at 464 Summer Ave. So I, I just just to go really way back. I, I'm a, I, I'm assuming there's a requirement. <coughs> there's a need. Can you describe the need? Uh, the need is a replacement building for the cemetery operations. Well, hold on. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Rick Mazzaro, 11 uh, Partridge Road. I think there are some people here who are not up to date, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, as to what the what's, what locations are being considered. Um, I've been to the last selectments meeting, and I had made a suggestion that in addition to the abutters, the obvious abutters, the people in the cemetery, I think, should also be considered as abutters. Um, there are people who visit these sites and expect peace, quiet, and what have you. And when I call the cemetery department, they actually thought that was a good idea, by the way. When I called the cemetery department, uh, they said, oh, we have no way of knowing who, you know, who to contact. You know, generally the people who are in those lots and people who buy the lots, we can't really send them a letter, you know. So needless to say, that call went well. Um, so I took it upon myself, and I kind of hung out in the cemetery a little bit from time to time. I actually made a little flyer. Um, I met some lovely people, a few I see here. And they had no idea that this was even in the... You know, times have changed. We all used to get the Chronicle. Or the, you know, that doesn't happen. And some of the older people, they're not online. They're not talking about this. I met one lady who was watering plants, and I'm happy to see her, her, her here tonight. She was devastated to think that her peace and quiet enjoyment while visiting her 
deceased relatives could be interrupted. So if you could take a minute, ex explain to those folks what the options are, what locations to be considered, <coughs> and maybe give them a minute <coughs> to express their concern. I think they'd appreciate that. Certainly, I can't speak for the cemetery department. No, um, that's fine. And I, I can't speak for people that have loved ones buried in the cemeteries. I don't. But they can, and some of them are here, but they don't understand. I don't think, I was the first one to notify them of this possibility. Um, so I think just a quick synopsis of, you know, like this gentleman asked, what's the need? You explain that in 30 letters or less, and now what are the possible solutions? I think that's what needs to be brought up to, or does everybody know? No, 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 no. <laughs> You don't right. know what the uh, what's happening necessarily. Like, why are we leaving Laurel Hill? Why is it being? Well, Bill, you want to jump in first? Yeah. Uh, I've been following this process since 2010. My name is Bill Brown. I'm a member of the Cemetery Board Trustees, as is John, and we are <coughs> members of this committee. Back in 2010, the town's engineering uh, department did it. Uh, study of six sites in the town of Reading. The four cemeteries, the lot and corner of uh, Audubon and Pearl and mixed in with the present DPW site. Some ways along the line, uh, the Board of Selectmen decided that everything should go down to the DPW site. And I'm sure you're going to nod your head and say yes. Uh, they hired a firm called Sampson and Weston and probably one of the best engineers in the state, no offense to any of my colleagues. Uh, and they came up to redo and put everybody in public works down to that site would be between 18 and 20 million dollars to do that site, put everybody, cemetery and everybody else down there. Um, they came up, the last, they went through about five renditions, I think the selectman finally got the message that it wouldn't work down there. They came up with 52 parking spots <coughs> at the most down at that site. Now this is bringing the, every operation of the town down there from South DW. There are 45 town employees, so where do you put everybody? There is no place. And they came down to the last um, thing. They said because of the wetlands, they did not think it was as feasible to do it down there. So um, going back to the history of Laura Hill and why it is not there, that lot is roughly seven thousand, a little over seventy-five hundred square feet. The equipment cannot physically fit on that building, that site. And this committee walked through. Uh, we walked through on Halloween uh, about a year ago, Greg, something like yep. that. And they agreed. The town's insurance company um, said that it was not a suitable site. Weston and Sampson said it was not a suitable site. The cemetery board of trustees. Uh, Going back to the study that uh, our engineering department, they rated the Lower Hill as number one, so that was knocked out because it was not. Forest Glen is number two site, um, Charles Lawn and Wood End. The other site on Audubon and Pearl was sold, so that didn't, was not feasible. So then this building committee was created to look at the other sites, and th this is the result of it. And um, you talk about your loved ones. Uh, I have 11 members of my family buried at Laura Hill and by them every day. So, uh, it's part of life, unfortunately, on death, whichever way you want to picture. And I've been around uh, town meeting for almost 50 years now. And every time that you want to do something against town, it's near me. And I, I understand there's an emotion with it. And uh, as far as your comment about it, um, trying to find all the relatives, it's almost impossible to find anybody relatives of the people that, that, that own the lots, quite frankly. And it would be very expensive for us to do it. So, a, a sign about the big, as big as that map <coughs> at the entry? Because that's a new cemetery, Laurel Hill, with all due respect. We, we, we understand that. We understand that. You know, there are fresh flowers at every cemetery. <coughs> at every I, 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 I understand that. I understand Somebody that. would see a sign at you no, know, they, $200. They As a matter of fact, you're speaking of that. I talked to our cemetery director today, and somebody called him, and apparently, and I'm sure there's nobody here, uh, put a sign in the cemetery, the site of the future of DBW's garage, and I think that stinks, quite frankly. Yeah, that does. That's not cool. And, I can see that. So are you saying you can't find, uh, John Rottwell, 
Twenty five yeah. bottom lane. You, you're saying that you can't identify the people that own the lots? Not very easily. You can, but to try to find their relatives or anybody. It, it, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Was there any consideration to town forest land? No. You, uh, that was considered uh, also in the 2010 study, and that was there's wetlands up there that would not be enough to face. They were talking about it, and actually I suggested moving all the DPW up where the present compost pile, but because of the wetlands, that will not work. And also that's. Child's lawn is also questionable because of wetlands. So, but it's one of the sites that they chose to look at. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I yeah, can't be on 34 batch on the road. Two questions. First, can you tell me exactly what would cost 18 to 20 million to add on to the current DPW building? And I'm well, pretty sure that in the wooded cemetery there are wetlands and it's conservation land. Yes, there because is. I, I back that. I know we do. So I'm not sure why it's okay to put a building there. If you put it on, my, my personal feeling would be put it on the fastest end road, and that is solid land. There is no fill there. Okay, but but that's not fair to those people that live there. But regardless, they don't care. What, what is going to cost 18 to 20 million? I don't understand what because needs to be such a shower and lockers and lunch room. What, what so can, can, I, can, I, can I answer that? Sure. So, what, what Bill's referring to is an overall study that was done for the town, not specific to the cemetery. That, that analyzed a replacement scheme for the current DPW facility. Oh, and the reason that the whole facility that was DPW, cemeteries, everything, and what they did was they basically rolled one piece of tasking into an, a, a larger single project, and that's where that dollar figure comes from. That was from 2010. That doesn't really answer the question, and it's not exclusive or unique to the cemetery. Part of the challenge and part of the cost had to do with the phasing. You basically had to relocate part of the DPW, tear some buildings down, rebuild new buildings because the amount of buildable land there actually got smaller after they built it because of the creation of wetlands. So there's really not a, f a reasonable or feasible way to, to shoehorn the cemetery's functionality to the existing DPW. And obviously uh, recreating a new DPW at that location was cost prohibitive. And, and they moved on that site in 1986 from a site that was where the uh, 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 Staples is now. It was supposed to be one there, but at the time the, felt, the town felt it was not a proper place for it. So they went from where the Curic building is, or I don't know what you want to call it. Um, there was, I think, 14 acres. They were going to cross the street to six, I mean, to eight acres, and they get shoved in the site for six acres. It just will not. You can't put 10 pounds of, in a five pound bag. And then the second part of your question there are wetlands at both um, yeah. Forest Glen and Charles Long, so, and, and Wood End. Yeah. So there are, there, are, there are wetlands impacts at both of those locations, but there is also buildable land at both of those locations. Uh, Brian O'Meara, 12, <coughs> Batch Elder Road. Um, for kind of a point of clarification, talk about this. The town engineer that did a study in 2010, they looked at six sites. They ruled out Charles Lawn and they ranked Wood End last. And six years later, those are the only two sites that are being proposed. So we've kind of touched on what's changed between now and then. But I think that would, I think there's some confusion there. Why, why are we now looking at only these two sites? And to be clear, the project manager is only going to look at the sites being proposed. They're not coming up with any other ideas. And this is an all or nothing solution. It's a 5,000 square foot all encompassing facility or nothing. And I know previous meetings, the idea was floated out there about four small, purely storage facilities at each cemetery without running sewer and stormwater, utilities, pump houses, and having to do all this, but just a storage facility for the lawn care equipment because that's really what gets carted up and transported around all over town. And I don't, there's nothing in the minutes about why that was, it was not discussed or why that wasn't floated out there. Why not put a solution out there for the project manager to entertain as well? My feeling is you could build four very nice storage structures without all these other perks. You could buy new, new lawn equipment for every cemetery at a fraction of the cost of what we're talking about doing this. And per the article that was online, Bill, your interview, where efficiency is the goal here, 
I would think that would be far more efficient to have equipment on each cemetery, move the personnel around, rather than every day carting up all this stuff, driving it all around town, driving it down to the DPW for fuel and maintenance, and then driving it back all around the cemeteries. And the wood end location is the most inefficient of any of these. It's as far away from the DPW as you can get. So you can, the equipment still has to be taken down there to be fueled and maintained. And my other question is, and, and I know uh, Ms. Toomey there was, made the comment in the minutes that Charles Vaughn may not be a viable option either. So are we really looking at one option? I mean, is Charles Vaughn even a play here? Or are we purely saying it's wood end, it's a 5,000 square foot building, or it's nothing? And because I would beg to differ that I don't think it's just life. I was with, and, and first of all, this is not an abutters issue. I mean, I've talked to people from precinct two, five, and eight that can't believe that we're considering the spend on this facility. I was with people from precinct eight on Saturday, a woman who buried her father in Wood End, he's, he's a veteran, buried him in Wood End last year, and when she heard about this project via the, the article online, she is beside herself for exactly that reason. She chose Wood End because of her word, serenity, and it's in conservation area. And the fact that, it, when she read that there could be a 5,000 square foot building with employee parking and offices and showers and lunchrooms, she's up in arms about it. So it's not just an abutters issue. And, and again, I've said this before, I'm not questioning the problem. I understand the buildings out of you. I'm just questioning the solution. I think we pigeonhole ourselves into one solution when there are other, we, we should be exploring other things because we're gonna spend money on this project manager who's basically looking at one thing. Yeah. That's it, there's one option on the table. And, and I think that's where a lot of the frustration lies. Mm -hmm. And so people are looking just for some clarity on that, in my feeling. So the answer to part of that question or some of that question is that the OPM is not looking at one site and he's not looking at just one cemetery. The OPM's tasking is going to be first and foremost to review the feasibility analysis that this organization conducted with the benefit of the 2010 engineer study that Bill referenced as well as our own experience. So that's point one. And if for some reason they highlight something with, that we missed or that we didn't weigh correctly or that would lend Laurel Hill or Forest Glen reconsideration, we'll reconsider it. But are, are they looking at Laurel Hill or Forest Glen? They, they are going to, they're, they're only looking at Charles. They're going to look at the analysis we performed of all four cemeteries. Okay. But to this, to this gentleman's point, are we looking at other solutions besides just building this entire 500,000 foot? 500,000. Whatever it is. Outside of any solution. Is there any <coughs> other solutions being sought out after besides building a new facility? So what, what, that's a, I like a no-brainer idea, it sounds like. Can I finish answering his I'm question sorry, first? Apologize. So first tasking is going to be to review the internal analysis that we performed. We identified two cemeteries as principal candidates, Charles Lawn and Wood End. We did not pick a spot within those cemeteries. We simply identified them as the, the most likely candidates for a number of factors. And following up on that, the OPM is gonna to continue to whittle down, hire consultants, maybe do some geotech analysis and all the other things that are going to give us better direction on what is the most suitable location. And obviously, the impact of the abutters is gonna play into that. So I, we haven't picked a spot, we haven't recommended a spot, we haven't decided on a spot, we don't know where the spot's gonna be. All we've been able to do thus far is try to provide some objective analysis based on our experience, based on what Bob Keating and the cemetery folks have told us, our own tours of their existing building, our own tours of the cemetery, and our own research has led us to the conclusion that there's two cemeteries that have the highest likelihood of meeting a bunch of different factors and criteria. One last question. The, the request for OPM said that the, the, the funding for the project would have to be approved by town meeting. So the funding is not, say, there, there's no bucket of money for this. In order for this to move forward, the funding would have to be approved by town meeting. Is that correct? I can't answer the question of whether there is or isn't funding in the town's budget somewhere already for this, but I do believe that it, is true. It that is in the, it's in the capital plan. But, but I, the RFP but said it had to be approved by town meeting. Right, town meeting will have to approve the project. It, the decision is as far as the location as well, correct? No. Yes. Okay. Town meeting would have to approve the location. This organization, the Permanent Building Committee, does not have the authority to pick a spot and tell the town where to build a building. Mm -hmm. 
all we can do is try to, uh, you look down the table here, you've got construction managers, architects, structural engineers, a lawyer. We, we build buildings, we work in the construction industry, and that's, that's why we were appointed to the committee. But we are not a decision-making body for the town. We're going to evaluate objectively all the information that we have available to us and whatever the, the town asks us to do and analyze, and then we're going to make a suggestion, and we're going to have the, the supporting information for that suggestion. <coughs> After that, it's up to town meeting and the board of select. Hi, Helen Connor, 65 Lowell Street. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are going to hire somebody to look at the building design, that type of stuff? Yes. Is there a firm that would look at operational efficiencies to see if there is potentially another way to do this to kind of leverage land in different places so there's not a burden in one particular place? Certainly the, the operational characteristics of the cemetery, the cemetery group will play into um, the design of the building. Uh, the OPM and, and some of the likely design candidates have experience in these types of buildings and these types of operations. But the limitations that we were given in terms of our evaluation was it was cemetery property that we're looking at. The operational efficiency that was referenced, was that for the entire DPW? That's one of the reasons that that building is being built, a 5,000 square foot building? The, the 4,000 square foot roughly building that the cemetery needs is just for their equipment and just for their operation. It has nothing to do with any of the other DPW functionality. Okay. So it's just the cemetery trucks, the, the maintenance equipment, the burial equipment, and Bill, you could go into I mean, does that include the, the plowing? Because I know that the cemetery trucks assist with the snow plowing in the winter. Correct, but those are the cemetery's trucks. Okay. So that's but, but the active, but there would be that activity there. Well, that they run. They run out of under the direction of DPW. Right. And to get to your point, that they all the vehicles have to go down there for the major maintenance. They do all their own in-house. And I've had this discussion <coughs> with the board of selectmen when they started this argument. They said, well. It should be down there. I said, well, then the same token, maybe the fire department and the police department should be down there because their reviewers are all down there. So, I mean, you could stretch fast and all, all over. I mean, and uh, I will tell you from experience, I don't think there's any other land in this town to build on. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but the, the, the cemetery department maintains all of their own equipment, yes, with the exception do. of trucks. Yeah. That's the only thing that yeah. the DPW maintains that correct. Right, Joe? Mm -hmm. Anybody else before we start repeating? Rick. Thank you. Uh, you know, when I when I bought my house in 1992, there was woods behind my house, and I knew there was land there. I mean, I'm in the business. I looked into I, I knew potentially, you know, I didn't know it would be a cemetery, but I figured it could be a park. Something could happen. So when the whole idea, you know, similar meetings were held when they said, we're going to put a cemetery here, there's a huge need. Um, Forest Glen has like four spots left. There's nothing over here. We need to. We the, the t there was this <coughs> crisis of you know the next person that dies, we're gonna have to put them like in the town hall. There's no land. We need a cemetery. So, boom! Before you know it, in my backyard is a is the four trees, and then there's a cemetery. So I've come to to that realization. But what's interesting to me, there was such a need for a place to bury the residents of this town to take. I mean, you say you haven't named the spot. Gee, let's see, there's, there's a big, open, round piece of land in the back of one end. Seems like a good spot. Where do we bury the people now? Once that cemetery has a building on it, are we going to have another meeting with new neighbors? This is, we're going to put a cemetery in your yard. You're, you're, the remedy for one problem is going to create a different situation. Because, again, 24 years ago, there was, it was the need was immediate. We need a cemetery. And now we're going to take half that cemetery and no longer have a place to, to bury people. So I think that has to be, you know, that has to be considered as well. Truthfully, this won't have a huge... I Can I answer that this, first? Yes. That was considered? I don't remember the numbers offhand, but something on the order of twelve or 1,300 spaces are available? Yeah. Or no, it's... 5,200. We, we did the, 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 bottom, the bottom line is, first of all, the, 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 the uh, building that's being proposed will in no way, shape, or form take up half of Wood End. 
uh, won't even be close to that. Um, but the the intent, if if Wood End or Charles Lawn or any of the other cemeteries is the final location, we will not build on any lots. We would we would use land that's outside the, the, the plots that have been plotted. And the plots that have been plotted will last at least 50 years um, based on, you know, current yeah. burials. And, and the current trend is cremation. So, <clears throat> so. what's the target date to make this decision? We're just going to follow the process. There's no target date. We're, we're, we're going to follow. We're going to follow the process of having an informed designers and professionals select a site, design for a site, publish it to the to the town, let the town decide. There's there's no deadline. There's no formal date that this has to be done. Did your ROI process get into uh, really an objective process whereby you looked at even purchasing? Two or three houses, raising the houses and putting the land, you know, putting the building in that location. In other words, did you get to the point of really going through the? I heard the eighteen million dollars. For instance, if you just carved out the cemetery piece of that, did you do a really objective analysis? But we we sort of filters focused on things like the cemetery land, the land we already own as a town. Or, I mean, I'd like to think within the guidelines we were given, we did a very objective analysis. Of of the options, we were not we were not told to to hit, you know see if there were potentially house lots available that the town could purchase or horse trade to, to make land for this. We we strictly looked at town land that's currently available within the cemeteries. Greg, I, I think it would be helpful for those here to understand what our marching orders are and where they came from, perhaps town meeting Warren article. Sure, uh, I don't have the article in front of me, but that's to, to Dave's point. To, Town meeting asked us to form as a body and to investigate the construction, the, basically the procurement construction of a replacement cemetery building. And within that, within that article was the direction for it to basically to look at town existing town property and the feasibility therein. So that's that's what we've done. Anne Marie O'Brien, Eight Grove Street. Just to clarify, is this money already allocated, or are we looking at another override for this? No. It's coming in within the capital plan. Okay. Which, if you don't know, is 5% of the budget <coughs> is either capital or debt. And that's where we're coming in. Okay. Under. Just that we're looking at other overrides that this town no. is looking at. So be so an override is for operating. It would, if anything, it would be an exclusion, which is uh, one time uh, money. Which is still, though, adding on to this other yeah. overrides that are coming in, increasing people's taxes. Yeah. Exclusions go away and overrides are forever. Correct, but we already have two exclusions already out there. Okay. Plus now with the whole kill them, reconstruction, that's going to be needed need going forward. Uh, Brian O'Mara, Beth Shelter Road. Along those same question along with in point of clarity for people that this is a capital project. So Mr. Lasher explained that to me that we can't just take this money and go hire new teachers. Like this couldn't go to the school, but this it, it this is a considered capital project. So if we didn't do this, it would go to another capital project. But my question then is to your point: the two capital projects I keep hearing about at the board of selectmen is the Killam School and a DPW facility. I keep hearing about this regionalized or potentially comprehensive redo of the DPW. And yes, the cemetery board of trustees falls under the DPW. And to your point, with the trend more cremations, fewer burials. What we're really talking about is cutting grass. It's lawn care. These are lawnmowers and trimmers. This is, this is what we're talking about. I don't know why that wouldn't be considered in a, cap, a comprehensive DPW solution, which is on the horizon. And I know it's not near term enough for what the cemetery trustees want, but it's out there. And I don't understand why we would spend 1.5 to $3 million on this while we're going to go spend significantly more on an overall DPW solution a few years down the road. And I, I don't know that this is the body to answer that. I know and Mr. Lilasher is not here. I'm sure he'd be able to speak to that. But that's been my question all along. If this comprehensive DPW solution is on the horizon, why this would not get folded into that when that's what we're talking about. We're talking about trucks and lawnmowers and snow plows. And we're talking about cutting grass and, and, and maintenance of the lawns. I definitely cannot speak to O'Brien's question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Basically, that would be under a debt exclusion, not under capital. Okay. 
that's a pretty slightly upstate question, which would be outside of Mount and Capitol County. Uh, Bob Farah, Bachelor Road. Um, I do have a couple of issues. One, yes, being a Nevada, um, Mr. Nazaro, same thing. I remember my niece riding in the horse, the 4 8 shows over there on the ranch. And oh, now we're turning in the cemetery, we're deciding what we're going to do. I mean, it's going to be quiet, it's going to be this. Well, it's quiet. But when I have to listen to the guys working over there, the noise, the trucks, the yelling, okay? And you want this tenfold? And I'll do respect to Mr. Brown. How old is the building in Lyle Hill? Uh, Which part changed. of it? Which part? I don't know, when did it first well, erect it? Okay, uh, they bought that lot in 1924. It was a chicken coop. They yeah. attached an 1896 um, addition to it. The next addition was 1946, and the last addition was 1952. Okay. And you can't get the year I was born, so I know how old that is. <laughs> so, in all due respect, people that go to visit the loved ones there, or who's been buried since 1952, they know there's a building there. Okay. These other people, they haven't experienced that. And I understand completely what so they're saying. The department would have loved to have it on that, but it physically cannot fit on that. Yeah. Accommodate your question. If, and this committee, I think, uh, some of them thought of a two story building. If you go to a two story building, that requires an elevator because of ADA compliance. And you still would not have enough room. Yep. Again, there's always solutions. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, and I can't imagine living on Parsons and trying to put that access through there. Plus, Franklin Street. There would be no, no access. There would be no access to the, the only thing that would come into there be utilities. If at all. Okay. Yes, but the, the, but the yes. traffic, I mean, yep. going to the Wood End School, anybody going to the center of town, it's bad as it's it absurd. is during the school year. Not to mention our property value of our taxes. You want this override, I, and our, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It's not. I think the so, DPW. Just the line, we don't want an override. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like well, I don't that would well, be fine because I know what would happen there. Uh, the DPW going down the road and this is what I've seen in the town over the years. You know, I went to um, Prospect Street School. Gone, sold house. Highland, gone. the library. <laughs> um, Lowell Street's gone, Pearl Street's gone. Um, you mentioned a couple pieces of property that was in the 2010 that had been sold. <clears throat> and all of a sudden now it's, well we need the cemetery to bury the people and now I'm hearing X amount of years later about, oh, well, we don't need all the space because cremations is popular now. So the hindsight just doesn't go with, like all that school pieces of land owned and everything's gone. And then all of a sudden, well, we built the new wood end school because we need more room. The hindsight is not there. And all I'm saying is, if you're looking at DPW down the road, then that's where it should be, period. So when you find the spot for the new DPW, and you will, if that's what you need to do, then this isn't that big of an extra for something like that. I don't know where it is, but that's a solution. And not have it in back of someone's house and have that impact that people, it's one thing, it's there, I buy the house, I know it's there. You bought the house, I've been there, my house 28 years, and I didn't have any of this. And now it's getting noisier, and the trucks, all the stuff, and like I said, um, what they say they're gonna do, and what they do, two different things, so. Um, as far as the, all the schools you can mention, I was the guy that got the started to sell them because we sat on them for 25 sure. years each and every one of them. Yeah. Um, and I agree with your, you know, not wanting your backyard, but I'll sincerely say to you, there is no other place in the town that we can put this So on. when you look at the front page of the Chronicle, when nothing's been decided, it's Wood End. This is the only spot, and then I see Wood End on the front page of the Chronicle, yeah, I still get it. And, um, <laughs> But Mike wants the one that reads it. 
she lets me know all the good stuff. And there it is, Wood End Cemetery is the choice. I was like, what the, I'm here at the meeting and nothing's been decided. Whose choice did, it, did the paper say it was? Because um, it certainly wasn't this someone organization. Someone from the cemetery department, I believe. Um, it's easy enough to look up. Um, yeah. But I guess what I'm hearing, you're saying no, but... Yeah. It's the only place to put it. I, I a little bit feel like I'm at the, the wrong meeting, although I appreciate you listening. But at the Selectman's meeting a few weeks ago at the uh, Senior Center, this topic came up, was, uh, was on the docket. And if they said it once, they said it a said it hundred times. You folks really need to go to the uh, special building uh, committee meeting on the 29th. Yeah, but what about, we don't really want that in our yard. Well, you, here's what you need to do. On the 29th, there's a meeting of the special building. Like, go back to, if, if you were to watch the, the film, that is what the suggestion was. And again, I appreciate your comments and informing the people up to where we are. But I can see that you're really not the, the decision makers. So who is, and how do we get to them, I guess, might be the question. And that would ultimately be the us off of you. Yeah. Yeah. you are. Who is? Ultimately, you guys will. Town meeting. Town meeting. Town meeting. So we're like like I said, it, just cir circling all the way back, the, the article that created this organization also asked us to investigate the construction of a new cemetery building. And the guidelines we were given was, here's all the information that we've had utilized in the past. Here are two people from the Cemetery Board of Trustees to help guide you. We'll give you access to any town employee you want. We interviewed Bob Keating twice for quite a long period of time. We went and visited the cemeteries. We put together a list of on, criteria on Halloween. on Halloween. On Halloween. And we didn't keep you. <laughs> we, yeah. Well, but you know what? Maybe but our so feedback is good because you might suggest, gee, here are the options you gave us. We recommend that none of these are good. Let's go back to, I mean, I suppose that's... Because you have heard us, maybe that's a way. Of we are going to form. We are going to form probably a list once we have an OPM on board and we have more data available to us. We'll probably create a list of sites in order. We'll probably recommend one, but there'll probably be more than one feasible. But we will probably recommend one, and we will include all of the information that that led us to get there objectively. And then it will be up to the board of selectmen and town meeting to to approve that. So it's only a site, you're not looking, could you look at other solutions, whether it be having a different building in each cemetery or postponing this until we get the whole DPW put together, or is it just gonna be, are they looking just for a site? We're just executing what we were asked to do, and that was to investigate a replacement cemetery building within the cemeteries. What, uh, you know, this, this new regional DPW facility, news to me. No idea what it is, where it would go, who's involved, and it's not part of our right. analysis. So I, I don't know what it is, and I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know how far off it is, and I don't know how much it's going to cost, and I don't know who pays for that. And not speaking to that, but I, I, to clarify the point, the only thing that's going to be on the table for town meeting is is a new building, is a new facility. Correct. The, there, are, there, are, to be clear, there aren't other solutions being considered because because that's that's because you, you you only deal with what's been handed to you. And, and that's the project that was handed to you. So I think that within within the realm of creativity, reasonable creativity, we've investigated a lot of different options and suggested some things. But a lot of it comes down to the way that the cemetery organization runs itself and the way that it is accustomed to running and the way it is equipped and the way it is staffed was a factor that went into our analysis. So trying to trying to have a paradigm shift of how they operate wasn't something that, that we felt responsible for pushing on them. We interviewed Bob Keating, it, it went what, close to two hours, Bill, maybe more. And then some of this organization actually went and toured their facility, looked at all their equipment, took dimensions of all their equipment, um, did some analysis of other similar facilities in other towns to gauge really how much square footage they need, what's usable square footage, what aren't good layouts and good designs, to come up with the, the characteristics that we were looking for. And then we ranked all the different aspects in a, in a study that we did internally. Um, and Impact to Butters was very high on that list of things that we took into account. So that's what we had to work with and that's what we've been, in, we've been analyzing. 
so just to understand, to so I yeah. apologize, I haven't so done a Paul of Oil 60, Paul of Oil 64, Batchelder Road, Thanks. town. Um, lived in Reading my whole life. My family has two since '52. Matter of fact, but just so I understand, so is it more equipment? It, what's the difference that you can't put a new building on the Laurel Hill site? Or is it fit more physical. mowers? More? Fit, no, physically the equipment doesn't fit in the building now. So where is it? When Laura Hill was built, it, um, it was one one cemetery. And most of that work was done by hand mowers. Then along came Forest Hill, I mean Forest Glen rather, and um, again, it was mostly hand mowers. Now they've gone up to as big as a 52 inch mower, yep. down from 20 ones. In, in order to, and when, back in Laura Hill days when they did, they had 17 people on the department. We have four full-time and two seasonal people now. So you're trying to do more work with bigger equipment. And just you just can't chuck. And matter of fact, um, about three years ago, I think, we actually <coughs> bought a cube to put outside to store the stuff in because it was not safe for the employees to be working in that building. They physically had to climb over the equipment to get in and out. And this, to me, this is what started the whole thing. I was there the day that they bought the brand new backhoe and to watch a gentleman have to put it in that building was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I went up there one morning um, helping put out the uh, markers and flags, and it took them 45 minutes from the time they got there to get the equipment on the, uh, and, and to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's a waste of time. That's 45 minutes in and 45 minutes out. That's a man's mm -hmm. day's work for one man. So I, I think mm -hmm. the other thing is, and anybody that's come to these meetings before, the, the offer's been there and you have to get coordinated through Bob Keating or the cemetery, but you can go look at mm -hmm. the building. And, and if anybody wants a personal tour, give me a call. And it, uh, my office uh, still stands for a personal mm -hmm. tour of my property, too. Huh? You can come look at my property. Absolutely. I told you, I've got beers. Uh, I have a question as well. Tom Boyle, Batch on the Road, 64 Batch on the Road. Uh, through the other suggestions that were made, did they ever look at contracting the work out? Yes. Or finding other locations to, to lease or to rent space from another construction company to store this equipment, especially if it's mowers? Yeah, yes, we did look into uh, uh, leasing out, uh, contracting out the mower. I think the only one that we could find was the town of Medford, and they have been very fortunate. They've had the same uh, contract for years. And you gotta understand, a lot of the outside contractors don't give a damn. They'll go in there and stop them and stop them. Mm -hmm. We'll be getting screaming and hollering. And to be honest, uh, if you wanna play the hot game, mm -hmm. under chapter 114, we can say no. And uh, there was suggested to us by the board selectmen that we do that, and we said no. We want our own people to take care of it because they care about the cemetery. And these boys, I gotta tell you, I did a lot of cemeteries when I did my genealogy and running in I, I believe it. Yeah. I'm not for sending it out, but if it's no. going to be a cost no. No. and convenience, it's not. And, and when you contract <coughs> stuff out, it isn't as cheap as you think. I, mean, right. you, you, mm -hmm. and I think the only other one I talked to was Lexington, and they have an old cemetery, and they just contract that out. And it's only a matter, of, and they put it under the park department on that cemetery. It's one of the original cemeteries. So. And there's definitely a benefit to that. I mean, all this goes away if if we can take a hard look at yeah. outsourcing all that work. It's it's the build you don't build a building, if the contractors don't do their job, go and get some money. <coughs> a lot of this stuff just goes away if, if you can get a good contractor to you know, dig some holes and cut some grass. And I, I think I think that's what we're talking about here. I hear a little bit of DBW stuff, but I think that's out of the scope of this meeting. I think the scope of this meeting is to Make sure the the grounds stay stay nice. Mm -hmm. I think that's and everything else is a byproduct. The buildings, the land, and everything else. It's just um, I, I don't know. I, you know, again, take another step back. It seems like we've come to the meeting and there's some decisions already made, and uh, that's the frustrating part about it. Well, what would it take to expand the scope of this new PM that you have coming in? Who's going to start looking at the alternatives? So if you expanded the scope, and uh, what 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 decision making has to happen to uh, to enable you to 
allowed the project manager to do some benchmarking, to look at other towns, to come up with some other alternatives, except for the very narrow definition of, of a decision that you've come up with. I think uh, the town manager and town council probably be better equipped to answer that, but I would think that you'd probably have to start over. Because the RFP for design for OPM services was, was advertised on the street, it was a public process, interviews were held, and we ranked those interviews, those interviewees, based on a, sub, uh, a written submission and then on an interview submission based on a certain set of criteria. If we go changing their criteria, I think we have to start the process over. I'm not talking about changing the criteria of the, the capabilities of, of the project manager. Well, the scope of the contract would be changing. Uh, um, oh, okay, all right. The, so the scope that the OPM is yeah. undertaking would now be different. And I think that that may have to be renegotiated or re-advertised on the street to start over. I, again, the town manager would probably be better equipped to answer that question. But that would be my my thought right off the cuff. Okay. Is there a deadline that this building has to be built? No. Like the building, the equipment has to leave Laurel Hill, or because no. I did hear a rumor that Laurel Hill, that building was sold to private, to private, to private, uh, private owner. That's that was the rumor on the street. That I have no idea. Someone now said what it was was the rumor you hear? that the building on Laurel Hill was sold privately to mm -hmm. someone privately. So I don't know if we had to be out of Laurel Hill by a certain no, period of time no, to kind of make not. a decision. Uh, if, if it was sold at all, it would have to go into the public bidding laws. It's an interesting one. It would probably fall in on its own court. So I was going to ask that. Who would buy it? What are they going to do? So you mentioned that there were some other alternatives that were explored. Are those documents? <laughs> somewhere just so folks could bring themselves up to in speed, the, just to understand. You mean other other parcels of land or? No, some like outsourcing or things like <coughs> that that were reviewed. Uh, operationally, what the what the cemetery division may or may not have investigated, I can't speak to. Okay. Like hiring a contractor or renting renting space out of, you know, somewhere else in private land out of town, somewhere out of town. Um, the, the, Options that we've investigated in addition to the um, surveys and analysis that were done previously should all be available on the town's website, either in our minutes or um, in the town engineer's documentation. I, I can answer her question, I think, a little bit. Um, the Board of Selectmen suggested it to us, <coughs> uh, what's going out there, and we explained to them under Chapter 114, which we work on, that we hired the people that are under the list, and we did not want outside contractors because most of the experience of outside contractors uh, from Bob Keating, who's been in the business for 40 years, it's not good. Yes, so you can replace them, for, but you're continually having a turnover. And I don't think you'd like the results that you get. Or leasing another building in another town, or going to a DPW in North Reading, or Stoneham, or knocking down a building, or in building a, a site. Has that been explored? Like other options besides building it on a cemetery? Yes, we have looked at it. And Audubon, Kerman Audubon was the other site that was looked at, and that was sold. Uh, combining with DPW, other than that, uh, no. And I will tell you, I think I have knowledge about every piece of land in this town that's over 5,000 square feet front, and there is no other place. The only other place I can think of, quite frankly, <coughs> would be lying across the high school, and that's 90 percent pledge. And, and, and I, I sympathize with people, believe me. Like I said, I've got uh, several relatives, including my wife, up in Long Hill, so I, I know how you feel about the cemeteries. And, and I, I've got my reservations made up there, too. Hi, Michael Mania, I'm my uh, One of the things that we've been dealing with um, a lot in town as residents, as all of us are residents, is the way the town has been managing our money, the tax money in general and the concerns that we have about um, the financial concerns of the town or the financial uh, uh, straits that the town is in with a lot of different issues with regard to um, the situation with trying to find Killam and uh, trying to find, find funding that potentially would go to the lawsuit for the high school. Uh, and so we're very concerned about cost too. And so um, one of the things that you mentioned in terms of your evaluation was, um, I, did you look at cost as one of the criteria or potential costs is one of the criteria for deciding on building? Indirectly, um, without having a design 
and without knowing the subsurface conditions and the substrates and the complexity of the building and the final siting of the building and the orientation of the building, it's hard to pin down a cost. What, what we did, in, a, in essence, try to do is weigh locations where we knew there'd be a significant cost burden because of that location. Um, I'm, I'm thinking utilities in some instances, um, clearing and backfilling in others. In Forest Glen, the only buildable location is actually depressed. Um, so you'd have, to, you'd have to clear a significant amount of the trees that are there, and then you'd have to bring in a significant amount of structural fill, compact it, retention walls, um, all sorts of, you know, so we, in, in a general sense of things that are obvious to us that would be cost premiums for any given location or within any specific cemetery, that did factor in. But in general, the, the size of the building that was defined by both what they have as well as the research that we had done, as well as research that the town engineer had done, we really said it's, it's going to roughly be this size building, a single story, because as Bill pointed out, two stories adds complexity and cost and, and elevator and other issues. Um, so we, we based it on that assumption. So the cost premiums of certain types of buildings in certain locations, yes, but overall cost of the building, we don't know enough to put a dollar value on that building. Well, today. it's interesting you said that, that you did take into consideration of butters because nothing of what you just said had anything to do with the loss of valuation of homes that are near, going to be near this. So well, you asked about the cost of the building. That's exactly right. So I so answered a question about the cost of the building. A, if there's a cost to be borne by, so are you assuming that there might be a cost borne by the residents in terms of loss of value of property? Every single billable lot in every single cemetery has a butters. Okay. Does that mean that you didn't consider so it? Does, well, I guess practically speaking, we couldn't not pick a building spot in a cemetery that didn't have an impact on a butter and use that as a criteria. Okay. Because every single cemetery has the same impact to an abutter or multiple abutters. So there's no, if there were a cemetery where there were absolutely no abutters, then that would, that would, that would weight that cemetery higher because there'd be zero impact. But Don to Gray, 35 Parsons Lane, which you'd be building right next to my property. <clears throat> you don't have abutters on the other side of my property if you go across that cemetery. It's wetlands, which we can't. And there's no which, butters. which we can't build near. Right. We can't. We can't build adjacent to wetlands. I saw something that would uh, go along with your comment. Now we we had conservation committee come meet with us and walk through us all the stipulations and guidelines, and we got updated town engineers' plot plans of where the wetlands are relative to the cemeteries. Okay. Just to, we, just to clarify, um, our recommendation. Um, and ranking of the cemeteries, um, we we didn't we didn't get we we looked at some areas, but we've made no recommendation as to a location within any of those cemeteries. Because I saw that on your original information that there, you did have several there, lots that were lined up and there, put out. There, that there, would be with no one butters, and it was in your the original well, plans. There are who's, who's, who's original plan? Because we this organization has not actually put pen. Is this? That's from 2010. There we go. So that was, that's where I was referencing. Yeah, so. Okay. But every every location on Wood End would have pluses and minuses. Obviously, um, the closer we get to a butters is a significant minus. Yes. Um, Are there going to be fuel? Is there going to be fuel there we, as well? We, is there going to be gasoline and oil to fill these trucks? So <clears> like 20 <throat> feet from my kid's window, from a bedroom window, we're going to see. O only oil tanks? No. no. I mean, not no, 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 no. Only what is stored in the vehicles or in the mowers or in or five gallon cans to replace them or uh, to replenish them. That's a fair answer. There'll be, there'll be no bulk storage at, there's, there's no intention of having bulk storage at a new facility consistent with the way that they're existing operations. So if they were stored there, they'd actually have to leave there and fuel up where? DPW. DPW. Like every other vehicle in the town of Reading. That's that was the sign here that have to go to the DPW to fuel up then to come back. Yes. Yeah. That was done, that was established over 40 years ago when there were many, many separate tanks around town and the EK and the EPA said, you know, they burst your dump. So at that time, the town decided to put one tank down to DPW and 
every vehicle is owned by the town. <coughs> But Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, when we met with Bob Keating, the, generally speaking, each truck, trailer combination makes about one trip a week to yeah. DPW to yeah. fill up on that's, fuel. That's, that's about right. right. But these, these trucks and mowers are stored with oil and gas, and yes. kids party in the cemetery, because I hear them. So something happens, a fire gets, the whole cemetery goes up in flames. I mean, no. that's kind of a problem. There, there are kids up there. Mm -hmm. They do party. I see them. I hear them. So that's another. How many syringes they picked up over there? Yeah. Walking. So I'm back to the problem. I, I just keep focusing. We need a spot in the town of Reading, as I understand it, for some more equipment. Not more, just no, some okay, new so equipment. Larger. No, no, no. It's replacement. Existing equipment. I, I think but we some have re larger equipment, larger mowers. The stuff, the stuff, that's, the stuff that's shoehorned into their house up there right now okay. is. Just need to find a spot. Any day at the cemetery board, <laughs> okay. you know, Billy, come on up. I'll show you the building. But I understand. But yeah. collectively, this group, working with your engineer, whoever you hire, whatever, we have to be able to come up with a solution in the town of Reading that can make this work. I think that's a big assumption. You, you, they, they put a filter on the on the uh, on the solution, right? So, in other words, it's too late now. I mean, they've already uh, narrowed it down, but. The, the, the solution is that you need a location to house the DPW equipment and, and resources that support the uh, cemeteries, right? It, it, not necessarily in the town. In the town of Reading is a filter, right? That, uh, that Shouldn't eliminates have put the outsourcing. Filter, but somehow there's going to be something that can work land here. Land in North Reading, it eliminates a whole bunch mm -hmm. of things, right? So okay. you've already put a filter on it when you say that, right? So in, now what's happened is we, we're sort of very much constrained right now because the, right. the decision process has been so narrowed down in terms of assumption around the solution that you know we're down to cemetery locations out here down to one two right. in the town right, right. So, so if I hear you right the best that we can do right now is to be active at the board of selectmen meeting make sure that we're active participants in offering alternatives or solutions certainly Somehow we get together. There's somebody that does. Town meeting well, is in Yeah. yeah. It, it, in all fairness, the board of selectmen, Mr. Lasher's office, everybody has directed us here. Yeah. Every question, and I know I've reached out to Bob's office. I've been at the board of selectmen meeting, and everybody said the same thing. Come talk to the building committee, right. which is probably why you see this. <laughs> all of us. Right. Yeah. 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 Dave Hoffman, 22 Batch Hill Road. Um, you had mentioned that they've allocated fifty thousand dollars to either the yes. project manager. You also said that from that process it goes into the design process. I am understanding that we don't have the money allocated yet for the, to pay that fee. The designer selection process, yes, would go right after we hire an OPM. And how much money are you guys budgeting or expecting? To we were in, so last last year we were allocated two hundred thousand for both hiring an OPM as well as a designer. Um, that money expired. And we were reallocated fifty thousand for the purposes of hiring an OPM, which we hope will also stretch to at least kicking off a design process or at least a schematic analysis. When would um, you have to go in for the next round of funding? I think November town meeting. So it would be at the November town meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's where all this yes. group of people really needs to be at. Yeah. Well, and it, it is <coughs> point of order is when you keep saying they, it's you. You, well, that's why I say this, we, this group of people right, we, at that town meeting. We, the town, allocated money to hire an OPM. Agreed. So the next town meeting, when you go for the next allocation, if this group of people does not want to see that funding go to the next round, they all yeah, have absolutely. to be there. Yeah. But, but we don't want to, we understand there's a problem. We have to figure out the solution, I, too. I totally agree, but if... if but we need to be part of it. But if, if Mr. O'Mara is saying that Bob LaLeisha is saying that they're looking at a new DPW location, then we should be at that town meeting explaining right. to those folks that we don't want to allocate any money until that actually exactly. is looked at and managed. Uh, let me say, say this. Through the rumor mill, I know where the new location is going to be. Uh, it's a combined DPW with Midfield, Wakefield, and Ready. And I can't tell you where it is, but they have an awful lot of camouflage trucks. So you can figure it out for yourself. Okay. Well, so we'll and I will tell you quite honestly, in my opinion, if it goes down that location, it's going to be an absolute nightmare for the town of running DPW. 
It would be wonderful for the other two. I'm trying to get out of that so I can come up any place I'm ready in, on a, on a morning. They're going to be next, adding extra hours. So, and that is state property, and it'll probably be 10 years, and I'll probably be dead by the time that ever gets built. Have you seen Franklin Street? Yes. The school's in session? Yes. <laughs> and, and going back to the Wood End Cemetery, for the, you may not know it, that was originally purchased for a school site. Way back when. And at one time, I'm told by a cemetery director and a couple of others, that they could have bought all the land up to a passing road for $150,000, and the previous town manager said no. So, you know, I rest my case. Yeah. You know, just because they made a mistake doesn't mean we have to the <coughs> There's been a lot of mistakes in this town. I, I agree. agree. To live with it. And I actually enjoy this town. I'm very happy we moved here. Oh, I, One I, of the reasons we moved here is because we found a quiet well, spot because our neighbors are very quiet. I've been here since 1932, and I certainly enjoy it. Yeah, it's because, a great because they're not building a facility in back in your I want to give them the word. Right. Thank you. I, I wish they had done that. Houses, houses near schools go up in value, and houses near cemeteries go down. But um, just one final question for me. It, who might we speak to about maybe having some kind of a sign, you know, where we can't apparently notify um, loved ones or whatever? If we're going to have a group, you know, I do feel strongly that people like this nice lady and, and this gentleman and this lady. I met you too, didn't yes, you I? Did. You did. And okay. I'll help you do whatever you want to do. That's right. Listen, okay, good. Um, <laughs> How, can we put a two hundred dollar sign that you know next to the other sign in the cemetery? Because again, it's a relatively new cemetery. There's a fresh geranium at every site, so I know that people come. Carla, I know, is there constantly. Um, I do think those people have a, a right to to know what's what's going on, and I think just a sign. We don't need to do a mailing or find out people's addresses. Um, a sign as big as that map behind that gentleman, I think, would do the trick. Well, Just to say that... In all due respect to signs, we have signs at each and every cemetery that says no dogs allowed, but they're still in there. So, people don't read signs. People read signs, they don't always obey what they say, but I think they see, don't, you know. I think people read signs. If it says, please be advised, this may be the future site of the, you know, to house the cemetery equipment. I think people will read it, so I, I tend to disagree with you. And you know, I'll pay for it. I'll write a check. I don't care. I'll, I'll put this. I, if I get permission, I'll get my sign guy take two walls and put a post up. It's come not to, tough. Come to our meeting on the six. Of what month? This, uh, September. Okay. So, that's the Clark. lot. That's the um, cemetery. Cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. We can't. All right. Well, I was going to answer that. That's, 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 that's a question. If you did, if you, between the between Bob Keating and the Cemetery Board of Trustees, you can probably get that answer. And if if that if that's not allowed, I mean, is there a legal reason why we would, we would be unable to get a listing of, of uh, it isn't that particular cemetery? That's highest There's no legal reason why you can't, but I don't I don't think you get a listing of all the uh, people that have. Uh, that owns lots there? Yeah, yeah you can go online. The yeah. lot, every lot is listed online who, who buried there. Who is. Who's buried there, but it doesn't who's tell you who's next to 10 addresses. Yeah, who bought yeah. the, basically, well, somebody yeah. had to buy I'm, it, right? I'm sure, I'm sure if you approach Bob Keating, he had the time and the, uh, the effort to do it, he could do it for you, but it would be a very expensive process. He told me there's no way to do it. How is that? I mean, how do you, let's go to how do you keep track, track of who has ownership? We need to get percentage. We need to get a small percentage. We need to get a percentage of people that it's on index. Oh, he's playing the whole role of it. I think there's nobody knows. What's the difference? Yeah. He, said there, he, he said there's no way, but maybe somebody else could. Yes. But short of that, a sign, is there any other solution you can think of, to Yeah, people that to visit there virtually every day. Right. Just start talking to everyone you see. Yeah. Well, that's what I was yeah. trying to get around. I'm like, I'm like the, I'm the weird all. guy that hangs out in the cemetery. <laughs> no. um, but, you know, it's interesting. I, 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 think it, I think it speaks to the importance of this topic. When really, I did not spend a lot of time. I maybe gave out 12 flyers. And, you know, just of notice of this meeting. 
and they're all, they all came. Get on Facebook too, though. That's but they all came. The, the 12 people that I told. So what if that's out of what, 1,500 potential sites? The 12 people I notified are all sitting here. So I, I think they need to be notified. Um, so I will come to that meeting and I'll ask about a sign and I'll paint it and dig holes, whatever I have to do, put it in. And, and I think Rick, the most important thing is that there's a timetable. So now let's just say you get the opportunity to put a sign up or we can get the addresses and, uh, and notify people proactively, uh, then, then you need a timetable for when people have to come together or when decisions are going to be made. So that has to be very, very much understood as well. This was an, sort of an accidental meeting the post, the, the little fly you put out in the uh, cemetery, right? So uh, I was looking for you specifically, by the way, where I, when I put it there, and you saw it. So it, was, it can't it's be it's happenstance. It has to be very well organized. Are there any other questions yes. relative to the for us? I just have one other suggestion, possibly. If the library is moving out of that vacant spot, can the town continue to lease that spot? The store Lime was in there. Just throwing it out there. No. The no. Thank you. That was one of the sites that were looked at yeah. when they did the when they did the feasibility for the present site. It was not feasible at that time. It might be worth looking into it again. No, it's it's so it's retail space that was converted for the Reading Public Library to be in. It's it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not zoned properly story. for that at all. Quick. This is this is industrial equipment. Our residential neighborhood is not where there's a will, there's a way. Carla Potion, my mom is obviously front and center in the cemetery. And I grew up there. My parents moved here in 61, and she wanted to live there. She pounded whoever was in charge of the cemetery department, and she could not buy that plot until they sold from the back to the front. Anyway, I, you know, she did it, unfortunately, just passed away and dropped dead, and bingo, there was a plot that she had to purchase six plots to get that spot she wanted. And she was determined, and so she's now there. And, but my father pays taxes on the house. I, I live in the house I grew up in now because it was too big for him. But, you know, th there is a way. He pays his taxes. He is 89, thankfully he's still here. But not able to come this evening. Um, but so is that is Mr. Romero's idea not going to be presented when you're doing this? That, like he said, put, some, you know, just whatever needed for that cemetery on each cemetery so that it's not why is that not going to be proposed as a solution? Well, I think, I, I'm very sorry about your mother. Thank you. No, that's um, fine. What, what we tried to do was look at the way that the cemetery department does business. And, and I, if you, Pat or John, if you think of any specific examples, we, we tested the limits to some degree of how they do their business and tried to look for an operational efficiency. but. The reality of the numbers of cemeteries and the number of places they go and the frequency of which they go there and the equipment they have to work with, it, it's not a simple matter of let's just stockpile one of each or a couple of each at each location in a shed. Some of it has to do with security, some of it has to do with maintenance, some of it has to do with access. Um, it, and you end up with still the same need to transport everything in a lot of different places because some equipment's always going to be coming out of, out of use, new equipment's going in. Um, you know, if there are kids partying in, in the in the cemeteries, what's the likelihood they light a shed on fire? Probably pretty high if they're doing heroin. So, so a building that's actually sprinkled and has fire alarm and is monitored by the police in lieu of a shed might actually be a better structure to have in the cemetery instead of four separate sheds that are tucked in the back corners where no one can see them. I, the, as a case in point, we, we within what we felt we could do, we did try to test the, the practicality of the way that the cemetery department operates. And there really wasn't anything that we saw glaring that, that led us to believe anything other than having a building where they, they centralize all their equipment and all their maintenance and all their administrative functions like they do today is, the, is, it, is not the best use. If I could just um, kind of restate what uh, Greg just said. We all joined this committee, um, volunteered our time because we want to make construction projects in the town be as cost effective, um, be the highest quality. And, uh, and quite frankly, one of the big items that's you know, on everyone's mind with overrides, you know, we, we would want to avoid that happening again. Um, you know, everyone's got this whole high school thing on their mind. 
maybe if a committee like this was in place, we wouldn't have that issue. So we were charged with we were charged with examining um, sites in a building, but we didn't rule out. We kind of went out of our bounds, and we and we did start to look at the operational efficiencies and look at different options. As we go through this process, we've made recommendations based on a certain amount of information that we have. As we go through the process, there'll be more and more information given to us, especially when we get a designer on board. As we get this information, if, if more and better op, um, options present themselves, we will examine them. If there's a more cost-effective solution, we're going to be the first people to jump on it. I mean, that's why, that's why we volunteered to be part of this committee. So just keep that in mind. We, we have looked at, at options. We're not ruling anything out. We'll continue to look at options. Um, we were given a pretty pretty narrow, you know, four sites. Evaluate the sites. We evaluated the sites. Wood end came out on top. We did it objectively. We, we weighted the impact to neighbors um, very highly before anyone showed up at this at, at a committee of ours. Just about everyone in this on this committee agreed that impact to neighbors should be rated highly. Unfortunately, when you when you have four sites that are all cemeteries that all have a butters, you're going to impact someone somewhere. Um, so we 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 have stated when we started this process that we're going to keep impact to neighbors as a high priority, and we're going to keep it as a high priority as long as we're on this committee and moving forward. Um, again, as we get new information, someone walks in the door tomorrow and says, hey, there's an opportunity to build a DPW um, somewhere that we can combine this with. If it's a more cost-effective solution for the town, we are going to vet it out to the, to the fullest extent. I didn't hear that. I, I, I thought what I heard very clearly was that you've already made the decision to keep the scope uh, within... Uh, We've been charged. We have been charged. We have been charged with examining sites and going through a process to build a building. We were charged that by the town. All of us, the town yeah. meeting, charged us to do that. Along that process, we have looked at, at operational efficiencies and things that, that different ways to do things. As we continue through the process, if the town tells us to look at something different, if the town presents an option to us that might be a better option, such as there's a possibility to combine this with the DPW, then we will we will examine that and vet it out to its fullest extent. <clears throat> so somebody has to tell you to look at something else before you're going to look at it. That's the town. We're following the town who meeting who mandate. The town? We're, we're following the town meeting Us. instruction, instructional motion that was granted at town meeting by all precincts in town okay. that gave this committee its charter okay. on what to do, and that's what. And we're, and, we're, and we're basing that on the amount of information that we have today. That amount of information, as we move forward through the process, will expand. For example, doing, doing um, subsurface investigations at, at sites to find out if the, if the land is acceptable to, to build on, a building on. If it turns out there, is issue, there are issues there with unsuitable soil materials, that will impact our decision. And again, we will get more information as the process, as the, as we go through the process. So I just, I just want to clarify. I don't, I, I don't want you to get the impression that we're refusing, we're refusing to, to explore possibilities. We weren't. We were given a very relatively specific task. I understand. Very yeah. relatively specific yeah. direction. Yeah. And, and and specific to the OPM, that is a contractual issue where we we clarified and wrote out a scope of work for that. For that bidding process, that proposal process, we—I don't think—and again, question for the town manager and town council—I don't think we can arbitrarily change that scope at this stage without re reintroducing it to a, a public bid process. Fair enough. And I—I I guess the alternative, what I heard, was that for the DPW in general, there was a different uh, scope to find where they actually went outside the boundaries of of the physical town of Reading to, to look at alternatives, right? Yeah, but, but keep in mind that, that technically speaking, <clears throat> the cemetery department is a, is a, a I don't know, organization underneath DPW. It's a division of DPW. But it also has, for the longest time, via precedent, operated as a standalone <coughs> entity. So 
we haven't, we're not mixing any sort of DPW functionality in. We were tasked specifically to look at the cemetery department's building and their operations within four of the cemeteries. So I do, don't, mix, don't mix DPW and the cemetery together. We have no tasking relative to DPW and we don't know anything about what may transpire, where it may transpire, when it will transpire. Yes, sir. Tom Pearson, 33A Street. Uh, I was wondering, have they thought of approaching people at Camp Curtis Guild to see if they could lease or purchase it? Yeah, yes. That? That's what I said, that's the rumor mill. No, I think he means current. Current. Yeah. Be before anything. I, I, I don't know if anybody's done that. But. Approaching <laughs> Camp Curtis? Yeah. Sure. Yes, they have. And no way you could. Well, if, if at all, it'll be 10 years out, for 10 to 15 years out. No, to lease them. To lease the space? No. It takes, it would take it out of the state legislature and everything else. So it's, it gets in quite a bit of. I guess one, one last clarifying question. The RFP, though, if I read it correctly, just lists Charles Long and Wood End. I know you said there were the other four that were looked at, but the RFP that went out to the OPM, that, that proposal request, I think it, it, it just lists those two sites, correct? Correct. Okay. So but it, but in that document, it also it also implied or required them to basically look back at the, the feasibility analysis that we did internally, okay. which is where they would get access to the engineer's documents from 2010, all of our documents that we put together, the scoring, the scoring criteria and feasibility that we did internally. Basically what we want is the OPM to look at what we did and say, for as, for as much as you know about your own town and impact to neighbors and, and feasibility and logistics, you hit all the high points or they may come back and say, you know, you missed a really important factor. And if that really important factor changes the calculus and brings Forrest Glenn back in or Laurel Hill back in, we're all for it. It just, we didn't want to spend money considering that the town engineer had done a feasibility analysis, a consultant had done a portion of a feasibility analysis back in 2010, and then we committed the time and energy to do it again, to spend yet more of the town's money to have somebody go and do the same legwork, the same analysis, only to reach the same conclusion. So, back checking our work, yes, but you're correct, the RFP did specifically call out uh, Wood End and Charles Long. I think it's important that, that everybody to understand as well that this committee doesn't operate on rumor and innuendo. This, co uh, this committee doesn't sponsor rumor or innuendo. Uh, there's been a lot of man hours and woman hours spent <laughs> on uh, <laughs> investigating <laughs> investigating the, the mandates that the town gave us and we're operating on facts and objective information uh, that's been given to us and there is no we're not spreading rumors we're not operating on rumors uh, and, and this committee is not uh, mandated to do that we're mandated to investigate using factual analysis so hopefully we've are there any other questions? Anything else we can answer? No, I just wanted to say that, you know, in, in all due respect, the others were a high priority. How many of them did you speak to? This is the first time, the first time we've come here. So no one ever really spoke to any of the others. So I guess, you know, I don't know how much of a priority that is. Now we're hearing things. Well, Nancy, you want to yeah, I'll take this. I think, I think as, a, as an architect, I think it's very difficult for anyone to envision what it is that we're proposing until we actually get to the point where we can propose something. So to try and bring a butters in at the stage where you really don't even know ourselves, the exact location or the look or the size, you know, a little bit, is I think pretty premature. I would rather see that input and response back to something tangible. It's very easy for us to imagine a 50,000 square foot building on a tiny little lot. And we wouldn't want that, nobody wants that. But to envision a 5,000 square foot building that is done, I didn't even know the Laurel Hill building was there until I went and visited it. But to come up with something that might actually be nice looking and fit well and blend in well, I don't know that until we design it. 
that's when I think your feedback is going to be critical. And the location for it specifically in those lots, if that's where it ends up, it's going to be critical. But to talk about it like this doesn't get us anywhere. We know this is important. We all have very strong feelings about <coughs> not wanting to impact that cemetery. There are loved ones there. That it's a beautiful cemetery. It's a quiet place. So clearly, that's all on our minds. But I think to be able to see something is going to tell us something. And that's where we want your feedback. So when we get to that point, you guys are going to be there. I mean, we can't do it without the abutters being there. Yeah, and I, I think, think that I think to highlight Nancy's point, and also what Dave just said, one of one of the reasons we were we were formed because of our expertise, but also as an objective set of eyes, um, we objectively have taken data, and we have tried to evaluate and score that criteria based on what we know the town does, what we know the cemetery department does. We, we don't start rumors, we don't operate on rumors, it's all objective and it's all fact-based and, and data-based. I don't, we don't know where the building's gonna go. You might not be in a butter. So if I approach you and I tell you, hey, what do you think about a cemetery building? I, I can guarantee you I know what the reaction's gonna be. You're gonna say, no, I don't want it. And the second is, I may, it may be a false alarm. I may get you and all your neighbors worked up and it ends up being moot. So what we didn't want to do, being objective, was to start approaching people about a building that may or may not exist, because we don't know. And we're just following through on a process to analyze and develop a set of criteria and to hire professionals to make a more educated decision. But to, to Nancy's point, as soon as there is relevant information that we need to, and, and Nancy and I are both in the library building committee, we understand the sensitivity to the neighbors, because going through a similar issue there. Very high on our list because we saw what happened, we saw how not to do it, and we're trying to bring those lessons learned to this organization, both from a fiscal perspective and a process perspective, as well as a communication perspective. We don't want to misinform by saying, so you're gonna have a, a building behind you, right, right, and Brian, right, right, on your, right on your back porch, when it turns out not to be the case. I mean, which do you feel better about us saying that we're not sure right now or just feeling like you're getting screwed? And I, we, we wanted to trend in the direction of remaining factual and objective. So right now, we don't know who the abutter's going to be. But it might have been better to have it be more open. And to, to your point, you said this press has been going on. That be this whole is for 2010. That's what. That, that study by the town engineer was done in 2010. That's correct. So why wasn't anybody engaged? At any point, when we started doing the evaluations of where you might go, to your point, yeah. you're not talking about random people on the street. You're talking about four sites that were you were asked to evaluate. That's that's significant. I think you are on the side of openness as opposed to the side of we just don't know. Anything so the yet. town, the town has the town tasked us to investigate the cemeteries for a new cemetery building. Every single one of our meetings, save one, has been open to the public, and all of our documentation is, should be available to the public. So I don't know what we haven't been doing in the open. The, the, the 2010 study was done by the DPW, and I don't think even the cemetery department knew what was going on. I don't know where it came from, but it came out of the blue. And I will say one thing. Uh, I was around when the present fire station was built. I was around when the police station was built. And I wish we had a committee like this at that time, because we built a fire station, and I think 10 or 15 years later, we had to go in and shore up the, the floor because of heavier trucks. I don't want to see that happen again. I'd like to see us build a building once and do it. And I'm not an architect, you people are. If I may, I have Don't, don't accuse me of that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I have two points. I think what some of these folks might mean oh, is if, if my next door neighbor wants to put a larger deck on their house, I get a letter to say, if you think this right. is not a good idea, come to a meeting. So I think maybe that's what you're referring so, to. You know, the, we're not saying you did this in the dark of night, but it, unless you have some notification, we can't guess what's going on with everything in the town. Secondly, Nancy Chilling, you know, I have tremendous respect for, and affection for Nancy Chilling for various reasons. But if I may, aside from just knowing where the building is, and is it going to be brick, is it going to be pretty, is it going to... That to me is irrelevant. I, I don't question that it will look as good as it can look. I don't really care where it sits. What I care about is the function that it serves. What, regardless of what the building looks like, 
there's going to be constant trucks up and down. That's what everybody has their own specific concern. To me, it's living with trucks and backhoes coming and going all day long. It goes out, it goes to the cemetery, it digs a hole, it comes back. This, who's taking a shower, who's having lunch, who's parking, who's going. That's, the building could be exquisite, it could be an architectural digest. That's not going to change, regardless of what building it is. And so that, that's my specific concern is, one, I live there. Number two, I have wonderful friends who I visit there. And, you know, I, I told the story at the Selectman's meeting, and I want to leave you with this. My mother passed away a year ago at an old age, and we miss her. But my dad is 92 years old, and she's at Forest Glen. That man takes a beach chair out of his trunk, and he sits there for three hours at a time and reads his paper, he waters her plant, he feels good, he leaves. If he were in Wood End, that experience would not be the same for him. Regardless if the building were stucco, shingle style, had a gazebo, a cupola, I don't care what it has. He couldn't take his beach chair. My, this gal sit next to me, her parents are in Forest Glen. She's neglected to say that. And my sister. And your sister. It's about the experience. When I saw this lady the other day, she was watering plants. I don't know who she has there. She was watering the neighbor's plant. The, oh, this is a pretty one. She watered his plant. She watered everybody's plant. She wasn't there for 30 seconds and by chance missed a truck coming in. She was there an, an hour. It's going to change the whole experience. We get that you have to put it somewhere. You know, we... we Things come up. But more than me, you know what? I don't sit on my deck. I go to Rockport this summer. I don't care. But I go and I visit Dom and Jerry Tango, dear friends of mine. We talk to, I meet their kids there. We laugh. We tell a story. Come on. A backhoe is going to pass me every time I'm standing there. It's just not a good, a, a good vibe for any cemetery. And not once have I heard anybody say, well, put it in Charles Lawn. There's only one neighbor there instead of 20 neighbors there. Mm -hmm. We don't want it in any cemetery. It's the same respect should be paid no matter what cemetery it is. And, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's my thing. Sir? Uh, my wife is buried there two years ago. I echo everything you just said. I could have said it better. I'm really worried about the intrusiveness with all the equipment. Where is if it ever ever ends up that you build it in Wood End, would it have a separate entrance rather than the entrance off of Franklin Street? Has anybody looked at that? Well, there are cul de sacs on either side. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the ge geography is around yeah, no other. Uh, around the cemetery. Maybe it's not feasible to have a separate. Uh, workforce entry. That's something to look at. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. Okay, uh, I appreciate that. We selected, my family and I selected this cemetery. It seems to have great potential. Uh, the way they're developing it, developing it kind of right now with the uh, trees and uh, the different shrubbery they're putting in, it has a potential to be probably a very elegant uh, cemetery in, in this, you know, compared well, to the Well, there's even a restriction. You, might, you couldn't, your wife might have said to you, honey, I want the, the headstone that's six feet tall because I was your queen for many years. <laughs> there's a restriction. You can have a headstone this tall. So you can't have a headstone this tall, but you can have a building with a backhoe. <laughs> Preservation or serenity, uh, uh, solitude, uh, that, that you <coughs> will be able to commune with, uh, right. with a loved one. Uh, now we have to come, uh, if we have to compete with all this equipment coming and going, especially out of that main entrance, 
That would end. That, yeah, that would ridiculous. be pretty bad. So secondary entrances should should be studied. And it would help out the neighbors too, probably. Another question, and uh, of course I'm not an abutter, uh, and I signed in on the uh, sign-in sheet. If there are any uh, notices that go out to abutters, uh, can the uh, people who are, uh, attended today get those notices? Mm -hmm. Good idea. Okay. My family would have been here, but most of them are on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Rockport. <laughs> yeah. Listen, before my mother died, just to add levity, she used to say to my father, Rico, don't die on the weekend. All the kids are at their beach houses. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we came back, though, for her. She yeah, was well, special. My wife too. used to say, don't get sick on the weekend. Oh, okay, <laughs> so similar stories. Yes. Are there any other... Just one last point. Is a subset of the uh, DPW. Uh, do you have some empowerment to be uh, to uh, offer up the uh, something that looks at the alternative? I heard that the gentleman down the end talked about a combined uh, operation for the balance of the DPW. Is there any way to have um, uh, this particular uh, capability merged in with that? Is that is that something you still have an opportunity to look at? Is it more cost effective? Is it uh, a better solution for the town? We haven't yeah. been told anything about a combined DPW facility or functionality. The last function was by uh, Weston and Sampson, and you're looking at a neighborhood of 18 to $22 million to combine everybody. And that would have to be a debt exclusion. It could not be carried under the present capital program. But that's everything, not just the cemetery. Yeah, that's every, every, right. everything from DPW. And, 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 and again, I'll go back to the fact that when they came up, when Wes and the Sampson came up, they said that they could only create 52 parking spots down there. There are presently 40, about 50 uh, town employees. So you're already behind the ball on parking. That does not include uh, ADA requirement parking and the customers that have to go down there and uh, visit the uh, present the DPW site to take the engineering everybody out of town hall. Believe me, uh, I sympathize with the gentleman going to the cemetery. My wife has married in uh, Laurel Hill for 15 years now and I understand how he feels, but there is no other sites around this town to can do it and like Greg says, they were charged by town meeting to look at the, within the four cemeteries to place the building. And a little history beyond that. The only reason that the cemetery department is under DPW now is because of the charter in 1986. Prior to that time, they were a separate entity. And when the new building was born, built one year prior to that, they didn't even consider bringing uh, the cemetery department in at that time. So. Good, good clarify. The information that we were given regarding the, the combination was a 2010 study done by Weston and Sampson that concluded that um, combining the cemetery operations and the DPW operations at the current site was not feasible. Current site, right. But I just heard you that they're pursuing some alternative site, right? Yes. We, we, we don't, don't know anything about that. We don't we, that was not in our purview. The it's information still, we were given was just the Western State. You're, you're, you're not marching off of uh, data from 2010, right? That's six years ago, right? So you, the data has evolved over that period of time, right? So why don't you update your criteria? We, we have followed the direction that we were given, which was this. This best. committee doesn't know. The rumors I know, okay. Oh, I, I have a lot of I have a lot of inside information in town. All right, we're, we're going to take a quick recess. We've been going for a little while here. We're going to take a quick five-minute recess, and then uh, we'll reconvene. So, if anybody wants to stick around, feel free. Um, we're going to break for five minutes. We'll come back at uh, eight forty-five. Seven minutes.
All right, we're going to go ahead and reconvene. I don't know where okay. Dave, and, uh, Dave and Brad went, but uh, uh, unless there's any other questions cemetery related. I know you were. You know where I was. Yeah, I know. College. <laughs> I didn't come back any smarter. As you should be, Bob. Bob, where are you? Where were you? Thank you, Brad. Connecticut College. Oh, nice. Dropping someone off? Uh, yeah, nice. <clears throat> Last chance. Going, going. Go on. All right, next order of business. Now that we're done with the cemetery related. It, uh, I think it's next Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, everything was fine. It's next Thursday. Okay. Uh, did anybody take a read over the minutes from last week? Yeah, I didn't see minutes in the packet. I didn't see minutes. All right, we won't. You might have been hallucinating minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen any? It was on the list. It's on the agenda. I didn't. Yeah, Caitlin was looking for him. I wasn't in today, so I don't know what happened. All right, so let's circle to the bylaw then. Greg, if I might ask you, did you set meeting dates? We have not talked about meeting dates. Okay. So actually, let's do that. Get that out of the way. You sent an email on that. To him, anyways. I can't remember. I think it was over. Okay. <coughs> the last one was just to these two. So I, I tried to, knowing that we've got the OPM selection coming up, potentially design services coming up, what I wanted to try to do was set up uh, just a schedule, uh, meeting schedule up through and bridging the, uh, the new year. What I did was try to pick Mondays that worked. Um, first Mondays of the month, wasn't close to something else I was aware of, wasn't close to holidays. Um, for September, I picked the 12th, but it sounds like there's going to be a special town meeting yeah. the 12th. Um, so I don't know if the 19th works for everybody. Is that a spillover day for town meeting? No. It will be done on the 12th. 19th works for me. May 19th. September 19th. Yes, yeah, September 19th. Next date after that, I had uh, Monday, October 3rd. Any conflicts, objections? I, I may be out of town that night. Colin does his defense of his thesis on Tuesday, so I may be down there with the big sign that says, Defense, defense. I don't think his <laughs> professors will like that. <laughs> I love it. One of your last chances to exact revenge. That's right, exactly. Exact heckle, heckle from the ground. Uh, uh, okay, so other than Nancy, uh, October 3rd, anybody? That's fine. That's fine. 
Okay. Day after the library opening. Tenders. Well, who might still be hung over? <laughs> <laughs> Monday, November 7th. So there's a couple interesting things about this. It's the day before election day. I don't know if that is a big deal to anybody. That, that, that's a wonderful day. That's um, my birthday. Oh, oh, that's even better. Nice. Right. Oh, that. But correct me if uh, Bob, your comments. Isn't that um, that's a night the bylaw committee meets? So that'd be a really good night for you to have a joint meeting because they would really like to talk to you about any changes you're thinking about for the bylaw. So if you could discuss them in advance mm. of that and get them a draft, yeah. that would be ideal. Yeah. And I could have town council come, or certainly one or two selectmen come also. So any objection to Monday, November seventh, being? You know, either a short or joint meeting with the bylaw committee. No objections, sir. Monday, December 5th. No problems. Monday, January 9th gets us into New Year's, into next year. send out a follow-on email to everybody just with those dates in it just so you can, yeah. if you didn't get them into your phone fast enough or just to make sure that uh, and we're doing 7 p.m. it'll be 7 p.m. Monday evenings we'll do it here unless otherwise I let you know and usually if we end up in another room when the uh, the notice gets sent out when it's posted that gets updated on the front page of the minutes or the agenda the bylaw committee will meet in the burger room that night, but they'll probably want to join you here because this is a bigger room for a part of the meeting. If I might, I just from memory recall some of your conversation. Um, one of them was uh, some kind of a general sense of one or more questions to the selectmen as to what their intention was at some points. <clears throat> and I know the one that I remember most vividly is <clears throat> the idea of project oversight. And to what level this group is expected to have oversight, and obviously it can't be day to day. <laughs> or, or we didn't tell you that when you when you joined so I think that's a reasonable discussion and I included the flow charts that you had agreed on because I thought they were an excellent visual of you know what projects look like and this bylaw was formed without any kind of visual or any kind of real notion is that typical to have something like that flow chart in the bylaw or? Um, no but it should be because this is just so clear it may it may help you know, it may, you may say, you know, on point A, we want this to happen. Point B, we want this to happen. Yeah. I don't know. And I think those flow charts need updating as well. Okay. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff that yep. should be in there that isn't in there. Yeah, I think we've learned a lot. Yes. Okay. Both the process and the selection process. I think one of the keys is when is a project a project? And quickly, my recollection was project assessment is no project yet. Project right, we, administration, we aha, there's a project. Yeah, we, we defined it as whenever town meeting appro approves a project, that's when it 
for the purposes of membership becomes a project. Okay, which is at the end of this first page. page. Best way to do this: go through the existing bylaw. Um, somebody read it out line by line, and anybody who thinks they have a modification or a question about that line jumps in with a question. Or yeah, sure. why not? I think that's probably that's the best way. Um, otherwise, um, otherwise we'll be all over the place. I think. You've not asked them to give you any preliminary kind of submission of the costs or I've um, I've sent him a contract which was in the RFP. Okay. And I filled in dollar figures and he now needs to fill in hourly rates and estimated hours for different parts, which I've not seen yet. Um, I, I know this came up earlier. Uh, just to remind you all, you have $50,000 from last year that was carried forward for the OPM, and you've got a new 150000 from town meeting that started July 1st for design services. So you do have still the 200000 That's already approved. until you see your laptop. Should be on the computer because I'm using the uh, okay. the other key on the iPad. Let me see for a second. Not so much. All right. Uh, first line, there will be a permanent building committee consisting of five permanent members and except as otherwise provided herein, up to two temporary members for each project that the permanent building committee undertakes. Members do we have? We have an associate member, right? Right. So we actually have five permanent, two associate, and two temporary. Yes. So there's no reference to associate members here. No. How did the, we get from this to <coughs> having what the, we have? There weren't any associate members in existence at the time. Um, a different bylaw created them. Actually, the charter created them, and then the bylaw defined what they are and, and how many each committee can have, and you can have up to two. Actually, I think you can have up to three. And those are not the, the same as the temporary. Um, no, and, so and we there's a, a whole paragraph for associate members. You don't, you don't really, because there's a whole section that defines what the rights and the duties of an associate member are. Um, if you will, they're only, um, they count as full members when the chair so designates them because of the absence of a full member. That is, that is given where, Bob? It's in a different bylaw. So should we reference that bylaw? In, in um, we could. Could. All, all committees, you know, that didn't have associates suddenly had them sprung upon them, okay. as it were. So, but would it be a good idea to put in here, you know, we've got two temporary members plus associates as allowed under no harm in that, certainly. Bylaw, 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 bylaw. Yeah, plus associates as allowed. Okay, 
And I'll send you these notes. I just put in front of the season highlighted enough that track changes on potentially add language for associate members or reference the applicable bylaw that allows for it. Yes. Okay. Uh, temporary members for each project that the permanent building committee undertakes um, somewhere. I'm not sure if this is the right spot or not. Should we add a definition for when there is a project? What constitutes a project? Well, even before we get there, except as otherwise provided herein, what are the limitations? Um, Temporary members? That's that middle paragraph? Yeah, that's, let me just see if there's other language. I know what it is, but uh, that goes if you look in the middle of paragraph the three, project, is it, Bob? yeah, we or any it. other, uh, let's see. Yeah, the whole, that whole middle paragraph is about temporary members. I, I think it applies it's to limited knowledge. Well, right now it only applies to school projects. That third paragraph probably could use some rewriting. Which? Um, this, this committee can have five permanent members. Let's put the two associates aside for a minute. Two temporary normally. If there's a um, reason, you can have four temporary. And the reason has to uh, be affiliated with a state or a, or a grant that's out there that so specifies. So the SBA, or the MSBA, <coughs> um, requires certain categories to be met. And seven of you would not be enough. There would have to be some representative, at least singular, from the schools. Um, you know, it could, be the high, it could be the high school principal if it's a new high school, it could be the superintendent, uh, you know, it could be a teacher. But that's a requirement of the grant. So this, this was put in there, you know, the default is seven, unless someone's given us a grant and they have their own terms. Now the library project um, did not have terms that couldn't be met by your structure, but we don't want to just say schools because we don't know what else may come along. Right. I'm not sure that language is terribly clear, but that's what the meaning of the last sentence or two in the third paragraph is. You see where it says nine. may not exceed nine. Well, let's just stick with the first paragraph right now. The, the reference to temporary members, aside from just stating that they're there and that um, as applicable to each project, we want to define what when a project exists for the purposes of temporary members, or do we want to throw that in somewhere lower down under I, a I think, section for temporary I members? think the first paragraph should only be permanent members myself. So the first and second paragraph just combine whatever the permanent members are. And then in another paragraph, talk about when temporary members are created and what they do. Because you won't always have temporary members. Right. Unless we get to that stage in the process. Right. Well, and then again, looking at some of the uh, bylaws that are already out there, if we're, if we're going to talk about permanent members, there are some qualifications that that permanent member have has to have, for instance, be a resident of the town. Um, you know, that second paragraph speaks of the types of professionals that we're looking for. It can't be a, an officer or official or paid employee of the town. Um, do we want to get that specific? Some you, of the, you don't, you some don't of need any of that because that's all in the charter. Okay. You have to be a resident. We did debate that because there's reasons why a non-resident would be a good choice, but they decided no. I mean, someone who owns a business and is not a resident, you'd think might be a good candidate, but. A number of these also say that you can't be a, uh, a member of any other board or committee, uh, but. <clears throat> I don't think this one says that, though. Some, some of the other ones. Some of the other ones. Towns. Only FinCom. No, I think he's talking about other towns. He's talking about other oh, towns. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah okay. other towns <clears throat> have language in there um, about yeah. that. Okay. Uh, maybe it was purposefully left out. You'd be out of luck. <laughs> is that a, is that or, a, or in luck, depending <laughs> on how you look at that coin. But do we think that's a function of you know time commitment, or do we think it's uh, for purposes of favoritism? Probably if you have probably conflict. Somebody I would, I would imagine probably on the, conflict, yeah. right? Conflict, yeah. Would it be and would it be elected committees and boards that we're talking about versus appointed committees and boards? I mean, I don't know what would be the conflict. I don't know. Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah, and again, I'm just just because it's on it's on the top. I know a number of these have it, but the the well, well bylaw, yeah, um, right on that first page, section fourteen point two says a member 
may not be, shall not be, uh, an officer, official, a paid employee of the town or a member of any board except that a town meeting member may be a member of this meeting. And I know that's the limitation to FinCon, too. Right. That's a question you might ask the selectmen and ultimately town meeting. I mean, maybe when the our bylaw was drawn up, that was specifically left out for a reason. I don't think so, because really, historically, FinCom is the only one that's ever thought of that way right. because of a conflict. But, you know, this, this, this body is the closest to FinCom, really, of any other, maybe the bylaw committee. But. So do I just want to make a, a note that says that... Ask. Yeah, ask you might ask. Board of Selectmen if they think yeah. there's any conflict provision that needs to be brought up. Why would we want to complicate matters, let's put it that way? Um, Which is a benefit of doing it, right? Yeah, I mean, we, there's, a, there's always a tendency in government particularly to make things totally opaque by having too many words. My view is to keep them very simple. Lawyers write the words. <laughs> <laughs> you get paid by the word, right? Called oh, jobs. <laughs> first, is, first thing is kill the lawyer. Right? Who said that? Shakespeare? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm serious about this. The, the fewer words, the better, in my view. Um, look at the US Constitution. It doesn't go into all kinds of words. It's very simple. Linkage Gettysburg Address. I agree that simpler is better, but I, I think whether or not there would be a conflict of interest if a person is on multiple committees is a, is a question. I don't know that well, we necessarily you know, answer, but I think it's a fair question. People though. are appointed to this committee yeah, by sensible that. people yeah, who can make those judgments. Right. We don't have to right. pre-make these judgments for them. You tell them what the other town committees moderator, are when you apply. The school department head or the certain various people make those judgments. Why should we make those judgments? Let them make those judgments. It's their job. Yeah. If, if they want to appoint someone who's always on zoning, then appoint someone who's always on zoning. I think that's kind of an advantage to have somebody on zoning board if you're here, so. Well, that's up to them to do it. Yeah, They're the appointing committee. We're not the appointing committee, so we shouldn't get involved in that, in my view. Keep it simple. I think we should ask the question if it was thought about. Mm -hmm. and I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that we are the, are the, I think that's almost a question outside of uh, it's almost a question for the bylaw committee and the board of select uh, to ponder on their own and decide mm -hmm. how if they want to add language it, into this. Is this now opening up the door for other perhaps committees that they don't want to open? I don't think that's a problem. It's a fair question. I agree with John's sentiment certainly, but I can, can tell you from the meetings I was in when this was being created that was never discussed. It just it was not a topic. If it had been a topic and it was dismissed, then I'd say don't bother with it. But it, it just hadn't been discussed. I agree with your conclusion, but so one of the uh, I think it's the, the appointment committee that can figure that stuff out. I can figure out. Yeah. One of, uh, speaking of the appointing committee, one of the notes I had that I can't resurrect now, but I remember what it was. <coughs> the um, the appointing committee consisting of the chair of the board of selectmen, the chair of the school committee, and the town moderator. Um, I guess why the chair of the school committee and why not somebody from, like why not a procurement agent? Or why not? Just figuring those are the two kinds of buildings in town that would most likely fall into your lap. It's either a town or a school building, now that we have a new library. Well, but I guess just from my perspective, <coughs> if I were sitting in Joe's shoes, you know, just not dissimilar from the OPM interviews, you know, dealing with this is the audience that two of you and maybe Jan or procure, whoever's procuring the job, whoever's running the job, whoever's, you know, seeing the job daily and being the first line of, you yeah. know, the first line of interaction between contractors and the problem and then us and the problem, would it make sense to have somebody else, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with something, of, you know, formula that works, but it just seems to me like you have another, somewhere in the town procurement process, there is a, another interested party that is going to be doing a lot of interaction with this organization, or potentially yeah, could be doing there's a lot only, of interaction. There's only a handful of appointment committees in the town. There's the three elected boards that now could create committees, and the selectmen have plenty of them, the others don't. Um, 
<clears throat> there is the FinCom Appointment Committee, the Bylaw Appointment Committee, and you. And all of those people are volunteers that are on the Appointment Committee, not staff, for what that's worth. It's pretty rare that staff is on a board. Um, I did appoint um, someone on the library one, and then the li libraries also did. Whether that's good or a bad idea, that just happened. Uh, but it's very rare. The staff is meant to be a resource for, town, for nighttime government, not a decision maker, I guess I'll say. So I think it's right to have those people in the room when there's questions. Um, but again, you're talking about two major elected boards and the chairs. And then just by default, our moderator always breaks the ties. Right. Okay. And, they're, and they're elected by the town. So that's the representation yeah. that you want. So for, from yeah. a political standpoint, I would think that those three are the heavy hitters. For well, it's not the political issue. It's just the it's the it's the the extent the, of, the extent of exposure to each other. Yeah. Whoever's in those shoes over there is going to be de as we found out is going to be dealing with us quite a bit. Right. Just to me, it would make sense that if there's you know any any reason that I could see them being in the room for the interviews and reviewing yeah. the the um, extensive. Uh, resumes that we all submitted. <laughs> We're laughing because mine is half a page. Um, <laughs> um, but Yours just said, you know who I am. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> Library building committee. Um, <laughs> but I think having them as a resource is really great, and they can inform those that are making the decision, but to have them actually make the decision, I, I So no formal need to include them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Great. Sir. Um, on town, paragraph, it shows the appointing committee. I think after the town moderator, I would like to see serve as the chairman of the appointing committee, as he does at the bylaw and the FinCom appointing his committee, or whatever committee. Or is it FinCom or one other? He serves as chair. Bylaw, I think. Bylaw committee. Does he? Do, do we need to delineate who the chair of the appointing committee well, is? I, I think. It, I'll look at the other bylaws. Uh, and see they, what they, they say. both have the moderator serves as the chair. Yeah, we all have. And I, I think it would be consistent with that. Yeah, I would agree. And then uh, there is no designated terms either. And I think the other two committees that the moderator and uh, they point to us equal, serve two year, whatever three year terms are equally spread out. I think that yeah. should be included too, which is what the other committees, all the other committees have failed to set up. Because there is no time limit for you people to serve. Well, there is for there us. Yeah, we all have we three terms. Years. They have three year terms to spell. Yeah, but it's not spelled out in the bylaw. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Mm, I thought it was generally. It's somewhere. It's, it's ne it nebulously describes staggering so terms so that there's two, basically two people being replaced every okay. year. Okay, that, that's my advantage. But it could could use some clarification. Yeah. Or, uh, if, if you look at the, again, the pointing of it, what is it, the bylaw and the other, what's the other involved? Uh, FinCom. FinCom. It's the same. They're worded so that you know, there's staggered terms. And I, I, like to, I think it should be in this one to be consistent with the other. Yeah, the last sentence of the next paragraph, which is still talking about the qualification of permanent members, says the term shall be so arranged as nearly as an equal okay. number of terms as possible shall okay. expire each year. But okay. it doesn't list okay. That's my total terms. So just kicking off that next paragraph, first sentence, permanent members should be volunteers having practical experience with skills and professions that, coordinate, that concentrate on design, construction, management, and or financing of commercial slash institutional buildings such as architects, civil engineers, structural engineers, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers, building contractors, managers, project, property managers, attorneys, and building tradespersons. Okay. Any reason to manipulate that language? Um, I wonder why the financing is in there since we don't do anything with financing. And I don't know why we've got commercial, institutional, and not put public buildings in there. In fact, you could take that out altogether and just put buildings. <coughs> Stephen Crook, uh, member of the uh, bylaw committee. Our, our intent, and whether we worded it right or not, I think was to capture people with commercial industrial building experience versus say residential construction and to kind of give a general laundry list of the sorts of backgrounds not to be uh, uh, 
limiting list, but a general direction. Mm -hmm. um, financing, I think, also was included in the thought that it, it, some of this committee would get in, look at costs of stuff, cost to build stuff. Whether it should be there or is as important, it certainly is open to discussion. But I think that was our, our mindset at the time. Um, I think we also expected this to happen, that once, once the committee was formed and got rolling, it would come back and say, hey, this isn't clear, or maybe this might be a different way. It was, yeah. we had to start somewhere. Well, I think certainly, you know, the people that have experienced financing and construction have some amount of construction background and history and insight. I mean, maybe not specific to geotech or structure or exterior envelope, but um, I, I guess a question to you, Bob or Joe, is how many different variables in how the town finances construction are there? And I can imagine a situation that could be very complex where that expertise would be helpful. If we get into some kind of a lease deal, um, not common, not, not typical, but it could happen. And I remember that was the general discussion but you wouldn't when it was pretty that, broad. I mean, you would then hire an expert. I mean, that would not be the um, everyday occurrence that we should have a permanent member of the but, committee. But you're, you're, you're potentially, as a committee, looking at something before the project exists. So you might want that expertise up front before you've hired anyone. Do we want to add associate members, permanent members, or associate members, Shell? If we're going to add in. Or committee members, just change the word to yeah. committee members. Well, I guess <clears throat> because we have temporary members adding, lumping in committee members might preclude mm -hmm. some temporary members if right. they're not included in that list. Yes, yeah, so I'll keep the distinction between permanent associate and temporary, <clears throat> I think is, is a good one. You're right. I think that you would want the same qualifications between your permanent and associate members. But not necessarily your temporary? No, your temporary members. No, because temporary members are going to be called stakeholder, stakeholder representatives. Right, yes. So a la right. the visit the, the cemetery. That's good. Yep. I wouldn't, I wouldn't limit the criteria by eliminating someone that has financing experience. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't I could, either. I could, I could conjure up a, a whole number of scenarios where that expertise would be very helpful to us. And you've got, at some point, people need to be appointed. And there's, right. a fil there's a filter. Right. So if there's someone with more relevant experience than someone who just has, you know, finance experience, then the people that you know filter that, I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't limit it. Yeah, I certainly don't think we want to exclude people based on a qualification. I think maybe to John's point though is it could be a little more broadly generalized. And to your point, let the filter be the filter. Yeah. You know, construction, engineering, architecture. I, I think it could be that general mm -hmm. as opposed to talking about financing of. Mm. You know, it's, it's not, I, I don't think it's the intent to not have somebody with experience in finance and commercial construction be a member of the board. I think it's just, we could very broadly say design, construction. Management. Yeah. I don't think we need to be so specific. Yeah, and just get rid of the financing commercial institutional and just design, yeah, construction, design management construction, of management buildings. of buildings. Of, of buildings. We could get rid of the and or. I, I, I was always told you never put and or in a legal document. Except on purpose. Just or is fine. By and or. Hmm? So Designing construction or management of buildings, such as. The list of trades. Yeah, again, I think the thought there was to exclude the exclusive or case, but maybe you just say or, it's understood to mean it includes the, you know, this and this, this or that. This or this. We're afraid to start to have trouble with that thing. Put the other and or. Do we want to call out the terms? So what I did, and again, this is just a note, and I think yeah. you know other people can can take this and run with it uh, for their you know for clarity. But 
Um, so I added and associate. So it says permanent and associate members should be volunteers having practical experience and skills in the professions that concentrate on design, construction, or management of uh, buildings. Of buildings. And then strike out the rest of that, and then leave it up to. I mean, if, if somebody wants to get. Are you including the such as architects, engineers, and no. Oh, you wouldn't include such as. No. I mean, design professionals is a wide, wide variety of them. Construction managers is a wide variety of them. There's a wide variety of tradespersons. Uh, wide variety of uh, construction-related attorneys, whether it's real estate or um, loss control, insurance. I actually think it would be helpful to keep the trade designations in there, mm -hmm. just because it calls out, you know, the types of, you know, kind of as an access a signboard of the types of people that are on the committee. <coughs> Re-advertising. Right. No. I, I yeah, I'm a chicken farmer. I don't fit <coughs> even remotely with what they're <coughs> suggesting, right? I think we have a bylaw for you. All right, so we, we, we want to do yeah, get you in the ballpark. Leave, leave all that language and just ask for them to, to clarify it. Yeah, I, I would let if them you, decide. I, does that doesn't really affect us in terms of substance? I don't think. Do you? I mean, I think. Well, let I think if you leave it in, you help the appointment committee a little, right. who don't know nearly as much as you right. folks do. Helps them filter. Yeah, sure. I think so. What about the last sentence? Do we want to define terms or just leave it? As I'll good? check. I'm pretty sure you're defined as a three-year somewhere. Just I not believe, in the bylaw. I thought either the charter or bylaw elsewhere in the general the charter made, made the term three years. Yes, it's the charter. That was our recent sentence, right? Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. <laughs> One associate member for ZBA or something. That's two years. And that's, that's a thing that comes out of state law for the yeah. ZBA. Right. And but yours too, was yours too. only FinCom has term limits. Uh, no, I think I'm no, I don't think so. Associates, Associates two. have two-year limits. Two. Yeah, so it is two. Yeah. Okay. Three for you, two for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, the intention of the bylaw committee was to have it be three-year terms staggered as equally as possible. Right. Yeah. So that way you're now a three-year because <laughs> right. when, so now Pat and I, three. when Pat and I go away, you're going to have a year left. Correct. So the, the, the five <laughs> permanents <laughs> are you staggered. You look nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the five permanents are staggered. And then the temporary. Yeah, Pat and I would start off as three. And then, yeah. And because there's no term limits, you could be reappointed reappointed indefinitely. <laughs> be careful, you, you will be. Yes. If you want to, you, you, you <laughs> can <laughs> withdraw <laughs> your name and from the. If, now, if, if you, you don't step forward, backwards, you have to keep it that way. So, so we will find someone. Please go ahead. So just, we don't want to do anything with this uh, qualification of the members, practical experience and skills in professions that concentrate on design, construction, management, and or financing of commercial and institutional buildings, such as architects, civil engineers, structural engineers, mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineers, yeah. building contractors, project managers, property <coughs> managers, attorneys. You just want to leave all that alone? Yeah. Well, we're going to take out, somebody suggested to take out commercial or institutional. I mean, we may be able to summarize all the various engineering as just engineers. So strike out commercial institutional? <laughs> well, you know, there's so many other types of yeah, buildings that you have to put in if you really want to be specific. Mm -hmm. This is why government likes lots of words. Mm -hmm. I know. This is exactly why government sub likes lots of words. Yes, sub <laughs> to me describe it and then everyone else reviews. Uh, do we need to call actually call out the terms? Or just you just say terms should be consistent with the. Uh, That's okay. We'll leave that As alone. is, yeah. Okay. Go somewhere else. When you specify the occupations of the people that are members of the committee, I mean, the way I'm trying to word it, it doesn't mean that like say you could have five attorneys. No, and it just it says so such I mean, as, so it doesn't even define them, so to no. speak. Right, and it's appointment committees. Discretion to balance the committee as they see fit. Right. You don't we hope someone has enough common sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All we need, we need is two out of five. Any one of us is not right. No, it's five attorneys would be worse. Yes, sir. Oh no. Five architects. We were also careful. Nothing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's like we were also careful when we wrote it to not, I believe Wells explicitly required any attorney to be on it. Right. Right. Yeah. Some of them do. So we were careful to word it so that you didn't have to have an attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could have five attorneys if, well, in the infinite wisdom of the appointing authority, they thought that was a good thing. Right. Though one would expect that you would choose a variety. And, and I, I thought it was to try and kind of give a general list of the idea of the sorts yeah. of people who wanted. Right. Yeah. We didn't want residential kitchen and bath designers necessarily, which is where the commercial and the institutional came from. But you might strike that and, and trust that the appointing committee would. We have that in their mind anyway. They think, God, the you know, right. anyway, choice between this, this bathroom designer for residential or not, this guy who's done municipal buildings for decades, and government buildings. You missed out municipal buildings. Right? And, um, and municipal. You, you missed it out in there. Uh, it was just commercial. You walked it in with commercial. It was just commercial and institutional. Right. I mean, certainly, bylaw committee would be open to suggestions. Uh, next paragraph, temporary members. Any other comments for the uh, qualifications of permanent? So we were including associates in that list and we're just striking the word commercial slash institutional. Yeah. No other, and again, these are just gonna be suggestions that filter to you guys. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not as if we're telling you what has to or can't be in there. We're just okay. suggestions. Can I go back to the first one where it says the uh, appointing authority shall appoint the temporary members? Uh, I think the temporary members should be appointed by the sponsoring agency, if you will. Like in, uh, Are you talking about the third paragraph? Yeah, in there someplace. Yeah, we're just we're just getting we're just getting there. So is there look, that second paragraph qualifications for permanent right. associate members any more? Nothing. Okay. Temporary mem members may be appointed for each individual project that the permanent building committee undertakes. I have a suggestion. Okay. I think the fourth paragraph should be moved up one paragraph. I think so too. Um, one, two, three, four. So it's the one that starts and off with permanent building committee should be responsible for the oversight. We're going to strike the word management. Um, that we're, paragraph? We're going to yeah. replace it. And probably the next paragraph. I'm sorry. Well, while I'm at it, do we just want to do the whole, the whole shebang? Yeah. Can I so, back us up a second based yep. upon what Bill just brought up? <coughs> The very first paragraph, permanent, the, sec the uh, second sentence, permanent and temporary members of the permanent building committee shall be appointed by an appointment committee. Um, do we want to add associate in there, number one, and maybe take temporary out of there? Were these temporary members appointed by the, by Alan? And, and, and that, that was clearly the will of the people that put this together at the okay. time. All right. For better right. or worse. And so maybe we just want to add could certainly question in it. there as well. Well, you could certainly question Bill's suggestion. Uh, and make sure people have given it some thought. Uh, I'm lost. Sorry. Where are you? On the first, very Sorry. first paragraph. Just, just piggybacking on what Bill just brought up regarding permanent and temporary appoints. members shall be appointed. Well, this gets into the definition of a project. So you're talking timing, yeah. not who. Well, but so, but I think related questions though, if. This gets back to the whole, like, you know, that flow chart with like a sponsoring a uh, sponsoring entity, right? If it's a cemetery building and we have, and, you know, the, the cemetery board of trustees would appoint their two members, their, who they want to speak for them and be their voting stakeholders for that project. That's not what this but says. That's not what this says. Right. That's not what this, this says. This says the temporary uh, committee members will be appointed by the appointing committee. Right. And I, I like Greg's point. I think. Sponsored agents should have the well, I'll also tell you that the folks that created this bylaw had no, desi no desire or no intention to have anyone other than the school committee, library, or selectmen be on a committee like this. Those would be the sp three sponsoring agencies, yeah. Yeah. three elected boards. No one imagined any other building in the town would be under the auspice of anyone but an elected board. And that's why it made more sense, maybe, in that context. Uh, you know, I'm not saying what's right and wrong, that's just how it was. Created. We're probably the only bo uh, body that has a separate building anyway. I don't know, recreation could. 
in theory. Well, and, and I, think I, I think that I think the temporary members should be appointed by the same committee that appoints the permanent members. Yeah. And the associate members. That makes sense. That everyone it should be one appointing body, which I guess is right. Board of Selectmen, pool committee, and moderator. Right. They they would appoint everyone that comes to this committee, be it an, an associate member, a permanent member, or a temporary member. Keep it simple. I'm yeah. glad to agree. They balance the group as they see fit. Right. So I, again, so that my suggestion would be just to add a associate for the first that, paragraph. In that first paragraph. Permanent associate is associate associate and temporary, temporary members. Members. building committee shall be appointed by. Just a general question. What's more important? Who's on the committee or what the committee's supposed to do? Because you know, I look at paragraphs four and five I mean, and it really tells you this is government. What the committee does. Yes, that really fun. may want to be up near the top. To say, mm -hmm. hey, this is what this committee's doing and then this is who's on it. I don't I know if there's is, a rhyme or reason to how yeah, these structured things get. how most bylaws first say what the committee is. In other words, who, who's on and it, then what and they, then what, what they, they do. do. Yeah. Yeah. So that line now reads: Leave it as is. Permanent associate well, and temporary members of the permanent building committee shall be appointed by an appoint an appointment committee consisting of the chair of the board of selectmen, the chair of the school committee, and the town moderator. Is that now correct? Yeah, we'll serve as chair or whatever the other language is. Yeah. So in essence, the appointing committee, in just using the cemetery as an example, could appoint two people, not to be foolish, but could appoint two people that aren't members of the cemetery board of trustees. And that's, that's, that's okay if a, if a project comes up in the middle of an appointment season the committee's okay convening on an ad hoc basis to appoint temporary members? Well, it says in a, in a temporary, it says down here though, further on, <clears throat> temporary members shall be registered voters selected by the board or committee that proposes a particular right. building or renovation project and shall serve only for the time. So the only people that will be put to the appointment committee will be selected by the committee that, so it's like a committee selecting people who are supposed to be approved. Right. Which is why I don't. Well, is why I just figured we'd skip the step, and it made more sense to have the sponsoring agency appoint its well, temporary members. Mm -hmm. Except that this you want to vet. You want to vet it. Yeah. The, yeah. Just politically, you want to vet it from those that are spending the money. Yeah, but wouldn't the appointment committee, you know, have the, the say on whether they want to do that? I mean, well, the appointment committee, their highest responsibility is ethics. And so if they perceive some kind of an ethical problem, and it could be more of a perception than a reality, mm -hmm. they'll say no to someone, and they have. So, you know, this just to use cemetery trustees, they may not have thought about it from a certain angle. Wait a minute, you're this. You can't serve on this. Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. So they're the last line of defense kind of from an ethics or conflict of interest or appearance of conflict of interest perspective. So a committee of the sponsoring agency submits up to two we, proposed members to the appointment committee yeah. who then decides right. whether or not they should be appointed right. to the appointment the committee. Yeah. These are our first two choices. So right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think that makes sense. It does sense. make sense. All right. I just, no I just want to get it straight. I have yeah. no problems with it. Well, my only suggestion was the temporary members paragraph get basically thrown at or near the end. Right. I think you right. need a little visual delineation between work of the permanent building committee with and without temporary members. And it's kind of all jumping. Well, you know, temporary members are supposed to come in after the project, so it should kind of flow yeah, I mean, that I, way. I don't know what the words are, but I liked your project assessment and whatever other term you want to use for the two stages. So I'm going to take this paragraph that uh, starts with temporary members may be appointed. I'm going to take that whole paragraph. I'm going to move it to the end. Either the end or I don't know about that last paragraph. That's kind of a different than a project. That's just kind of an ongoing thing. Okay, so so between hard, I don't know. I don't know how to answer it. All right. Uh, so it is now maybe, the second to last paragraph. Maybe that last paragraph wants to be uh, higher up. Yeah, I'd move that to the last paragraph. 
the temporary members? Yeah, because those other three paragraphs I'll talk about what the committee's doing. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think under the second to last paragraph, it talks about the sponsoring agency shall notify the permanent yeah. building committee of its intention. That's probably the perfect place to put in when a project starts. And temporary members are yeah, part of that, the Yeah, that's a good transition area. And then you have the temporary yeah. members underneath that. I didn't catch that. Why don't you have, so when we talk about uh, the sponsoring agency shall notify, you know, that kind of says when the project is going to happen, and then the temporary members come up as a result of that sponsoring agency. So move this down. So they move this down. I think what, that paragraph what I would suggest is you just swap temporary members paragraph with the last paragraph. Move that last paragraph up to be the third paragraph. Okay. Move this one down. Okay. Move, this, yeah. move this one up to the third. I move the director. Move off. the director like, up. Move, move, move I think Joe so. up. Yeah. Because that's it. Doesn't make any difference if you have projects going on or not. That's something right. you got to do on a regular Front door. basis. So how are we going to do this? So yeah, now that we're done moving them, which ones well, are going to add? Why don't Why don't we keep them in the present order for review and then move them last? Because I've already moved them. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it reads better. <laughs> so yeah, but I mean, we don't know what we're talking about now. Which uh, Which, think, which yeah. paragraph? So are we what used to be the fourth <laughs> paragraph is now the third paragraph. Is that the one that we're editing? No, no, no. I don't know. True. There's There's right. three cuts, that's, that's and you just got to find the peanut in the. <laughs> yeah, the the show, it's a shell game. Greg's gonna usher us through paragraph by paragraph. I will. Okay, I okay. suspect okay. that if he reads the first five words, right. we'll all get to the. All right. So okay. we've yeah. already we've already beat down. So the first two paragraphs have not changed position, and we I think are done with those two. The third paragraph is the one that says permanent building committee should be responsible for the oversight and management of all major municipal and school building design studies and construction projects having expected aggregate costs exceeding two million dollars. So that's number three now. Is Just number them on your page. This is going to be the first two are one. as is, one and two. Two. This has become the three? permanent building committee one that he just read. That has the two million dollar value. It's now it. number three. So one quick comment but on why, two million. This doesn't make sense at all. Well, let's just get them in the order. And then we <laughs> no, can the order doesn't make sense because we're, we're talking about the makeup of the committee and then we're going on to saying what we're doing and then what is now the third paragraph, which will become the fourth, is back to what the committee consists of. No, no, I think the third paragraph should go to the bottom after. I mean, I think, I thought, Bob, you said move the permanent building committee shall work with the director of facilities as being paragraph three. I like that as three because it doesn't, you haven't done any project right. descriptions yet. Right. Okay, I'll move that up to three. Okay. Done. This still doesn't make any sense. But it'll uh, it'll get there. We'll have, a, this will, this won't be your last crack. <laughs> It's either a camel, an elephant, or a horse. We haven't because, decided. Because we haven't got to the temporary members right. yet. Right. Yeah, but the temporary members come after the project. Right. After we have a project. Right. right. No, not if, not if you deal with, as Bob says, the bylaws are set up to say what the committee well, is well, you're before right. you get to that's, what the committee does. But that's okay. Does. That's okay in this case. It makes more sense to, because there won't always be temporary members. They will exist some of the time when there is a project. And, and we want to tell when they become on board. So I think it makes sense to clarify that. Right, because then then in, in the flowchart, we included that as a specific point of when, when technically there is a project. Up until that point, it's just this entity analyzing and studying. I mean, I, I can't imagine that temporary members paragraph can't be simplified. It looks much too large to me. But yeah. I'd have to look at it. Greg, did, did you think we should go? Well, we're setting out two requirements for temporary members that we're not setting out for. We talk about other members as well. No, yeah, I think we should go one, two. Clearly, we have, to be, have to be registered voters. Yeah. We should do it. Is it one, two, three. There's probably things in there that aren't needed because they're part of the charter. I, I think the order like that. Awesome. Registered voters. Okay. Well, the, the order. I, we, can, we can circle back to the order. This is what the committee later. Right. No. Should have. Uh, this is the committee. That, uh, That's the one point five. This is what they do. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I think, I think, I think we can get rid of the two million dollars to say to, major. To, to know who should be on. One point five of state law, I think, is about. Well, no. state law, but say state law that has the nothing to do with this bylaw. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the one point five yeah. might be a good trade. That's an because, OPM because state that, law. Yeah, and that's a, that's, that's not a bad. Like, if you're bringing in, if you got to bring in an OPM, that's not a bad cutoff point to say. All right, because if you just say major. It, it, it's, it's, it's vague, it's nebulous. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I don't know if that's what we want. It's something that we want as a committee um, and as a town to be able to kind of just pick and choose. Like, you know what, yeah, that is only 500000 but it's that important that we want to get our hands in it. This one's $3 million, but it's really something that should be under Joe because it's... So if we want that, but if we want to provide some clarity, the 1.5 makes a lot of sense to me because that's when you... That's aligned with state. It's aligned with the yeah. state when you got to hire an OPM. And well, and that's but the the whole issue with this with this I mean this two million dollar number has already created consternation. So why even put a dollar value in there? To your point, there may be some three or four hundred thousand dollar things that these guys want us to be engaged in, and there may be some other you know wholesale like roofing jobs or some sort of performance stuff that that we don't need to. That's you know it's in their wheelhouse and we don't we don't need to touch it. So I, I don't know that there's a dollar value definition to what benefit we can bring to the town. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you're going to change over time. And I think you know internally with our with you know with our process, we have more or less kind of a mechanism to punt per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just say that's too small. It's not worth our effort. Yeah. Or we're too busy. <laughs> or it's really not. It's not in our. It's not really not something that we should get involved in or need to get involved in or, yeah. or we'd love to take a look at it and give you some feedback. I, you know, I just, I just think that that threshold value is, I mean, I know the state defines that a project anticipated to be 1.5 mil or higher, or you have to have an OPM, but I think that's kind of just as nebulous of a threshold of, you know, level of import to the town as any yeah, other. No, I, I hear you. I'm, I was just, I'm just, I'm operating from the point of a dollar value in there, I think, mirroring the OPM. But to your point, taking it out, yeah. maybe that make, does make more sense. Take out the dollar value OPM. You think to say major, and then it's, it's up to, you know, the sponsoring agency to decide if they want to bring us in, and then... You're going to find that there's a strong voice in town meeting that wants a number in there, because they don't want to rely on the sponsoring agency to make that call. They want you to make that call. Well, Wellesley has half a billion. Hawkington has 100,000. Yeah, and, and those numbers were thought to be way too small in what he does. Yeah, again, I think the thought process was <clears throat> that we wanted to have a threshold over which it had to go to the right. committee. We didn't want to have a number so small that you had to look at every, you know, say $50,000 repayment project. A little nickel and dime for them. Yeah. I don't think we intend to exclude you from looking at smaller stuff or offer opinions on smaller stuff. The, uh, the original, <clears throat> particularly if I recall the intent of the original maker of the instructional motion, they wanted to ensure that stuff larger than some reasonable amount came to this. And if you just say a major project, major is nebulous. Uh, there might be a good argument to one and a half million if that's if that's the magic line that, yeah. that the OPM comes I think that's a good number. Instead of two. We didn't know at the time. Um, I guess the, well, the flip side of that too is and you, you think back, and, and maybe you don't have as much history, but I, I can look at Bob and Joe and Nancy and, and actually anybody on this side of the table, and they'll all shake their heads. How much, how much will a cemetery building cost? None of us know. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's we, a problem, too. We, we, can all, we can all make very educated guesses, and we can be across a huge spectrum and all be right because our assumptions are all quantifiable. Full plated. The, the, problem, the problem is is that if you, you know, the, anybody that's looking at this bylaw, if, they cherry, if there's a value in there, they cherry pick and say, well, you know, I, I have a number that says that building's going to come in at 1.499. It's less than your 1.5. You don't need an OPM, and the building committee doesn't have to get involved. Huh. Whereas maybe 1.499 doesn't pass the sniff test, but you say, yeah, it looks like it's a million, a million two, and you go, yeah, that's under can, the one can, and a half. Can we word it such that it's something along the lines has the potential of exceeding 1.5 million has to go to the community? So, you know, it's it sort of it says that. 
having does that expected in, aggregate does that costs. bring stuff on you that you don't necessarily want to look at? But we should have a process that. to just Or pass. can you build a process that then says, all right, yeah, this half million, it's, it's pretty straightforward, it looks good, go ahead, go with it. But can't we decide that anyway? We don't have to, you know, somebody says you want to take on that half a million dollar, well, right. we'd like to bring a half a million dollar project to you. We say, yeah, it's pretty simple, you can handle that. Well, this, this bylaw says you shall be responsible. It doesn't say you can punt. Yeah. yeah. Just, just right. to be clear. Yeah. So that's, I think that's the case. It changed the wording a little bit. I think, well, but that's part of, that was part of the update we wanted to make to it was that we have some discretion to refuse. Yeah. Well, I mean, and the intent isn't, you know, we're all volunteers. The intent isn't to stuff it to the town, yeah. clearly. Uh, but there might be things that either we're busier with something else, which some of it, you know, some of the not overwhelming us is going to be sponsoring agencies and the elected boards understanding kind of what our available bandwidth yeah. is. And then the flip side of that is we may, there may be things that come to us that we just help a little bit with and they're off on their own or we, we take on entirely. So right. Needham, Needham says the committee is responsible for projects having a total project cost of 500000 or more. The committee may defer its jurisdiction in the instance where the project includes little or no actual building construction. Roofing replacement. That, um, I don't know. I like that. I like that, that complicates massage it. that little one yeah. of actual building construction to right. give it more. Right. One of the things I think we need to figure out what, what are we trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Forget about the dollar value. Right. So, so if, if we stake a, a dollar value, um, you know, what this says now is. If it's over two million, it's ours, whether we like it or not, whether anyone in town likes it or not. I think the intent is to have a threshold where you got to kind of look at it, take our hats off, and you know look at it from the top view, where uh, all all the other committees in town at a certain threshold have to have to right. have to come through us. And I think we want the opportunity to pass, as Nancy pointed out. Yeah. You know, because if you just leave it as major, oh, we just built a school. Well, I mean, it's just an elementary school. That's not major. I don't ask me to go build it. Go ask me to build a fifty thousand square foot elementary school, and that's not a major project. So, so that's that's why I think we want in there because that's an exaggeration and it's beyond. But you need to have something to as a fact check against the other committees. That's more something being pressed on us, I guess. If we set it up with some discretion and we put a dollar amount in there and it results in too much work or too little work, we can always change it. Well, it, it, it just, I'm looking back at the, the process okay. chart. I had criteria to accept a decline, availability and adequacy of yeah. funding, quantity or complexity of ongoing projects, applicant timeline cannot reasonably be met, like schools, you know, they get a wild hair to try to do an addition or something, you know, in, in, a, in summer months when, you know, we haven't, there, you know, there's one month left in school and just there's absolutely no way you can, you can do that timeline. Um, conditions DRT should evaluate, um, you know, i.e. circling back to the library and, you know, fire, the fire chief, police chief, no one had, had heard boo about what they were planning to do until after it was already designed and money allocated and things changed. Um, and then any other metrics or minimum criteria, if we have something along those lines. And, you know, some of those aren't flat out rejection criteria, but it's circle back, go, you know, it start, it's a repeat of the loop, go back, start from the beginning, get your, you know, ducks in a row. And that's where Brad, that application, uh, the SOI that Brad put together kind of helps along that, helps in that regard is it forces the applicant to actually walk through the, walk through the wickets and, and make sure that they, they've actually looked at some of the minimum baseline things that we're going to look at. I think this would be solved if you just changed the word responsible to review. So you should review anything that's Shall whatever, review you? a million and a half dollars. Whether you choose to take it on or can take it on is a different problem. I think well. you need to have language in the bylaw that gets to the, someone has decided this is a good idea, but you haven't yet. And you have to, you know, you outlined it really well in your flow chart. So that just needs to find its way into a couple of sentences yeah, or two. I, I think Hoppington, there should Hoppington, be a. I'm sorry, go ahead, John. I, I think there should be a number in here, it doesn't matter what it is, a million and a half, above which we must get involved. Yeah. But we can get involved for projects less, but we can turn them down. But we can't turn them down if they're more than oh, yeah, one and a half million. Well, that should be you, a given. Know, you, you can, can if you're busy. Right? I don't think as so. As a priority. I, I, don't think, I don't think we. Not turn down, but defer. 
Uh, you're busy on something. You can't do five things. Whoa. So it well, happens. But, I guess, but I guess circling back to the, the point, though, and the point is we apply our expertise to help the town. So if there's, yeah. if it, if there's a, pro a project in excess of 1.5 million where you have to have an OPM, and what we just went through in terms of developing an RP and doing interviews and then you know, identifying criteria, baseline criteria, basis of design for some sort of project, I, I'm with John, I don't think you would want us not taking on something of that type of significance. I agree, I think that's a, actually a good approach is Right. We must well be involved at one point five. But we can or be higher. The other okay. way you can look that look at this is town meeting can be your gatekeepers. It has to be something in the capital plan. If there's a project that's already been in the capital plan, then you can review it. Otherwise, you can't. That means someone else has discussed it with all the representatives. On uh, on page twenty five of the handout is a guideline from Hawkinson's. Uh, bylaw that might give us some if we're, if we're not stuck on numbers uh, that might give us so it says um, under administration of project construction uh, committee of proposing entities shall administer the construction of a project as follows a the committee shall administer construction of projects for which the town incurs bonded debt I mean there's going to be a certain a certain number of projects where that, that there has to be a bond taken out that's over a certain limit. Uh, the proposing entity, I'm going to skip forward, shall administer projects that fall within its annual maintenance or equivalent budget. So that's a sliding scale. That's zero. <laughs> uh, a proposing entity uh, may administer a project costing less than $100,000. Uh, and committee shall administer construction of all other projects unless everybody agrees that the proposing entity shall administer construction. And again, that may be a lot of words to say what we are all just talking about, but I think this gives us some, um, you know, if we're not stuck on a number, maybe that's how you get around there or some, some version of that. I think you're also at a point where you've got some basic philosophical questions you want to have a discussion about with other people that are do you want town meeting to be first? Do you want to be first? I could see it either way. You know, is there a dollar figure? I'll tell you the person who wanted this the most said absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, we can't rely on groups that have their own interests right. to just go ahead and, and, put, and proceed without your stamp of approval. I guess to John's point, if we've got four $2 million projects going on and a $20 million project comes along, we can't say we're too busy. To handle the, the more critical yeah. project. Well, and part of but part of the rationale in, in that particular portion of our of our process <coughs> chart was to basically make the sponsoring agencies part of that filter. You yeah. Know, because right. it, you know by by filling out your 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 SOI <coughs> application right. and, and just in general between these guys and the board of selectmen kind of knowing what we're up to. Is there really any realistic expectation that within the town you're going to have disparate elected boards trying to bombard us with multiple large projects at the same time? No, the, town, the town, I don't think, could do it, and I don't think the no. town meeting no. would do it. And right. right. So I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's the case. I'm thinking if there's one major project and a bunch of little stuff that trickles in, that's where I'm thinking mm. we would want to say that. Here, here's you know, come to one meeting. Send us your documents. We'll give you some insight, and you can go off and take care of that on your own kind of thing. Yeah, or well, we could refuse to even talk to them. Right. Yeah. Do, do, do we agree just conceptually that we should put a dollar value in? It becomes a threshold. It sounds like the. It sounds, I think it sounds like the million and a half is the most the sensible one. Million and a half makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So so if it's over a million and a half, it's got to come through it's us. It's got to come through us. If it's but less than that. Because you have so to hire have, an OPM. If it's, if it's less than that, they can come to us and we can get involved. And if it's over 1.5, you think that's maybe a, a question for debate. If it's over 1.5, do we have the ability to say no thank you? I would say we do. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think we should. No. I would say the way it's written now, the intent of saying shell is that you do not have the, the option of saying no. I agree. Right. Now you <laughs> might look at it and go, oh, this is a pretty straightforward project. Yeah, you look at a good plan, go with it, run with it, bless it, and then go on to the yeah. next one, perhaps. 
fast, but at least yeah. it's going to roll. But you need an OPM, yeah. so I think. Yeah. See, I don't know why. I would no think any time there's an OPM involved, this committee should be involved. That's why I redid that the roof capital. Not be 2.7. So, like I said, I keep struggling back. The expect the expectation from town meeting, and I think people that form this board is that we're here to help the town spend wisely. Not yeah. not make the same mistake two times. Right. So, you know, I don't think it does the town any benefit if we can pick and choose which project we do or don't at, at that level of cost to, to be able to punt. The um, the I think the security upgrade. Project. Mm. Yeah, that's an interesting one. What's the what's the projected value of that? No idea. No idea. I mean, you wouldn't throw a dot. I mean, would, would you guess it would be over or under? One point four nine nine. No, trust me, I'm all for that. I, I thought it was. I thought it was. It was, like, well, I thought it was over a million dollars. I think we. Yeah, I think we can go yeah. over that's a million. Not, that's not a building. Right. I know. That's that's a system. Right. It's like a roof. There's computers involved and wiring and stuff like that. That's not. We wouldn't get it over. We don't have the expertise. We're civil engineers and architects. And but would you need well, an OPM? Yeah. Yeah. Don't know yet. <laughs> well, no, Still that's, in the early stage. that's beyond our Yeah, that's, paper, that's an interesting one because it's beginning to get closer to the thing that we talked about how we explicitly and explicitly exclude, such as water and sewer infrastructure, traffic control devices, paving projects, roadways, and we said, you know, how much do we need to specify that roadway is not a building and we don't want you to worry about roadways, for instance, or... It's a building to me. That was, that was funny because now it's, now it's, a, West tech, West it's, it's a subsystem of the building. No, we can't get into it's some degree, like that. It's, but, it, you know, it's, it's but like you say, it's, it's more a system than a building. It's a system. Um, you might look at that and say, hey, that's a system, that's not a building. It's not a building. We don't, no, the way we the dialogue was worded clearly. We don't have the expertise yeah. to do that. But I think you, I think you say that well, 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 building systems well, committee. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I think you could say we don't have the expertise, and this isn't a building in the the sense that the bylaw meant it. And you could probably sell that. So I would, have, I, would have, I, would have, okay. I would have thought that the way we were talking before giving was like a one point five million dollar threshold. That if that project was two, two reasonably million. expected yeah. to be three million, we would then. I'm not saying whether or not we should be involved. I would, I would expect that based on what we're talking about, the way we're talking about writing this bylaw, we would be required to be involved. The, the concept that that's not a building project didn't, didn't dawn on me. I, I would say, yeah, part so, of a permanent building. Yeah, it's, it's part well, of a... What about, what what about building a major a road through building. town? Would we get involved in that? <laughs> a what? Repaving West Street and stuff like that. I'm not, putting sewers in. I'm not, John, I'm not, I'm not, not, advo I'm not advocating that we need to be involved in that project. I'm just telling you, from what this says, it's a, a building project, putting security systems it's in all the buildings. Building project. If it ends up being a $10 million project, right. who does the town have to make sure our money is being spent wisely? Right, that's right. It, a, $10 million, a $10 million project would fall in Joe's group, correct? Right. Okay. But if they came along and they want to do a $10 million um, computer network server upgrade, I think. Again, I would argue that's not really a building project per se. That's right. We now, maybe control. it becomes a little bit of one if you're building a new I town hall from scratch that, among other so things, holds your server farm. I want you to take over technology also. It's the same. Maybe if you're building a new water treatment plant, yeah. assuming you weren't on MWRA, one of the numerous components of it would be a security system within okay, it. Okay, so here you go. This is Nita. Nita <laughs> has, the committee is responsible for projects. Did I read this already? Uh, I read, it again. <laughs> I'll read it again. Not allowed. <laughs> it says the committee is responsible for projects having a total cost of five hundred thousand or more. We could say one point five. The committee may defer its jurisdiction in the instance where the project includes little or no actual building construction. Absolutely. Yeah. That sounds right. good. So all far. <laughs> <laughs> hey, need them. <laughs> well, uh, so but that says the same thing. Yeah, as well, but well, so, well, so circle well. back to the security thing. Um, do we have to get an OPM if it's if, yeah. it, if it ends up being more than a million and you know a million and a half? Yeah, but we're not the only people that, that can get an OPM. <coughs> Agreed. You know the town has expertise. Well, the town's procuring the OPM for us, regardless. I mean, we aren't, we aren't a contracting authority, so yeah. legally speaking, it's the town of Reading, not the permanent building committee, yeah, that's contracting with OPMs and architects and everybody else. But what else can you imagine doing in facilities? Uh, really, I like that. Yeah. 
I can't imagine much. Like a, a multi year well, roofing project. What we're project getting into <coughs> is what is called mission creep. That's what we're going to do. Uh, I think the worst thing you would do is get mission creep. You can never get out once you get in. That could be happening in the next the next year. Like the one we did. Yeah, we're going to spend fifty five grand next year to do a software. I happen to be. I happen to like that language that Needham has because it gives us the. It gives us the flex. It gives us a dollar threshold of flexibility to defer. I think if we just had language in there that said we have to be involved with anything one point in excess one point five or higher, right. but still gives us the flexibility in the case of a three million dollar security system upgrade or, or, or a roof to or a roof yeah. to defer that because it's not. Necessarily in our. It's not, but right. I've done security systems. Pat, you've probably run into security systems on some of the schools and stuff, no? Yeah, yeah no doubt. I mean, I it's not like we completely lack experience in that area. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know the full scope of it, but it's not like a single trade, I'd imagine. You're right. Gonna, you're going to have door, door hardware, yeah. you're going to have patching, painting. Yeah. At some point, you're going to get into file yeah. sub bids. Yeah. You know, because yeah. of so Maybe you have to replace. Bids. Half, half the doors. So, yeah, so I mean, I don't know, if you want to replace that, let's say we were putting sprinklers everywhere. Right. Would you all of a sudden start to feel like that's a building renovation project? Right. You know, it, it, I'm not advocating one way or another for us right. to be involved should, in that project. It should give us the opportunity to discuss it and say, hey, is this something we collectively as a group feel that we can... That, yeah. should be involved in. That's why I think the wording shall review is, is right. the right wording. Mm -hmm. And then what you... Are responsible about is a different decision. I don't know who makes it, whether you make it or someone makes you make it. But mm. I think you should review everything that's a million and a half under him and up. Mm. And then if you say, well, this has nothing to do with our expertise, yeah. that's fine. They, right. Basically, the same word that they have to set up. Yeah, yeah. probably. Or if it's something, you know, how many roofs have you replaced? I mean, if you get a three million dollar multi year roofing project yeah. on yeah. to replace seven roofs. It's something that right. you can probably handle and you can defer. And, and the sense of that from again why you were formed is wait a minute, does someone who know what they're doing have oversight over this project? Wait a, if we're spending three million right. on a roof, should we be building a new building or whatever it was? But if you have a three million dollar seven building roofing project, I would argue that seven different projects each is each of which is three million divided by seven in value and so right. Yeah, we we didn't want you to deal with just little roofing projects. On the other hand, the intent also is to have you kind of look at sort of the general condition of buildings. And you might say, "Gee whiz, you got a lot of buildings that have lousy roofs right now." Right, but maybe you know we collectively say, "Okay, are we doing the same type of roof? Are we doing you know membrane roofs on all these roofs?" Or uh, and we can kind of create some standardized or make some suggestions as it comes through us for a review. We try not to prohibit you from getting right. that. We just tried not to require you to do that, whereas once you hit that currently $2 million threshold, we wanted you, we wanted to require you to look at it. Well, I think there's another rationale, too, and it's, it's, in, it's, it's in here, but they're not linked together, and that is the, the basically the, the building assessment. You know, if, you, if you're going to start a roofing project, the, one of the key things that I think of is what equipment is on that roof that mm. during a roofing replacement would be an optimum time to change. You know, if you have uh, bay issues or you know um, rooftop units or some sort of installed equipment that sits on the roof, or if you were going to do a renovation and add more vents or add more this or add more you know uh, remote antennas for for security infrastructure and telemetry. You know, when you peel the roof up, is a time to poke all those holes in it, not after you put a new roof down. Okay. So there, there's also a link there that says, yeah, it's just a roofing project. The reality is, is that between the infrastructure assessment and your roofing assessment and your 10-year capital plan, you may end up with one of those roofs, even though it's, you know, $300,000 roof, there's seven or $800,000 worth of yeah, upgrades totally. that are, you know, life cycle replacements or whatever that, that are associated with it. But also, I think the thought was to be helpful to town meeting to come and say, hey, your high school's in good shape, your police station's in fantastic shape, your cemetery garage is a disaster, you need to do something sooner than later about your DPW garage and your, your pre-library edition project has all sorts of roofing issues and HVAC issues and you got to work on this. you got some problems over at the Killam School because of ADA access, but 
Wood End is fantastic, and Birch Meadow is pretty good, and this is this. And so you get sort of a ranks of town meeting, we have an idea of kind of what might be coming in the next five, ten years, and what was worn out, what was shiny and new. And so that was sort of the, the, the general assessment and report. And, yeah. Yeah. and I mean, you're welcome to jump into smaller things if you want. We didn't want to require you to. But I think the, the body wanted to look at the big stuff. Yeah. And how thoroughly you dig into the big stuff is maybe waiting in your purview. But with your expertise and what you've run into in, in your sort of initial stuff, I think you can give a lot of feedback and say, hey, this is great, this doesn't work right, can you reword the other thing? And by law, we'll look at it, and eventually town meeting will, will offer an opinion on it. One of the challenges of the PBC that I remember discussing was it doesn't report to anyone. Everyone else does. Uh, Bylaw and FinCom are advisory to town meeting. There was some wisdom that you should be too. Because virtually anything you bring as a project or a repair is going to go through town meeting. That's not how it was done. So that's another topic I'd say of discussion. Well, that's what, um, that's what uh, at least when we formulated this process flowchart, that's what we had most of the reports. Yeah. We would address them to all boards and the town manager, but basically they'd be a, they'd be a presentation at town meeting. But they are, are they addressed to the sponsoring agencies, are they? We, well, we initially had said that, but circling back to using the sponsoring agencies as somewhat of a filter, if we didn't address it to all boards, potential sponsoring agencies, then the left hand may not know what the right hand's doing. Mm -hmm. So you may get schools and somebody else trying to solicit our attention at the same time. Whereas if the school committee gets a report that says, hey, for the last couple months, we've been studying this for those guys, they realize that we already have something in the hopper. There's already, uh, you know, a, a trajectory of presenting a, you know, a, a financial request for, you know, further activity related to that project going to town meeting, and they realize, hey, hey we can't, can't have two things in the hopper at the same time, or this is going to hit, you know, this is going to hit for debt exclusion and override before we can get to it, and there's no chance it's going to, you know, they can go to the well twice for this kind of thing. Does, um, that was the rationale for reporting to all the boards, was that so everybody knows exactly what, what, we, what we're doing, what we're up to, and what we're going to recommend. When you say all the boards, I'd suggest you mean elected boards. Correct. The same, the same boards as the sponsoring, potential sponsoring agencies. Are we talking about two different things? We were talking about reporting to and, should well, I say, answering to? Yeah, yeah there is a difference. Um, the last paragraph, which may or may not have been moved, says you'll make an annual report to town meeting. Yes. So I think that's good. That's not a third paragraph. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the paragraph formally known as the last paragraph. Shall so we all agree on the 1.5? All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. I think you don't get a vote. I think I think I'm, I'm good with the 1.5. I think we just have to figure out the wording. Nothing to do with the cemetery. There's nothing to do with the cemetery. You can't vote on that. Okay. It's a free country. You can vote. It just doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. Count, let's count the votes back. Thank you. I'll put that on memory bank. I like, Absolutely. I, I like that language that Needham had. Do we use that language and say 1.5? Yes. Yeah. The committee is responsible for projects that have a total cost, project cost of 1.5 of one office. Well, it's, three, wait, three, it's three, in eight. the packet from tonight. Yeah, it's page don't, two, don't use this word. It says the committee is responsible. We're not yeah, don't responsible, use responsible for anything. Yeah. <laughs> the committee shall review. Oh, it does say shall you're responsible. Review. It says yeah. shall review. <laughs> The committee shall review and be responsible. <laughs> <laughs> that was its our fault. Well, when we have in there, permanent building committee shall review, be responsible for, shall review <coughs> all major municipal. Are we getting rid of oversight and management of I all major? So. Yes. Well, you uh, could say administration. Okay. I like yes. that word. Shall review and administer. Um, I, would say, I would say monitor, but that's the word. Right? That's a good one. Monitor. 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 Because nobody knows what it means. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> it's like that commercial. So I'm just a termite <laughs> monitor. <laughs> 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 Most of the other bylaws actually refer to it as 
of supervising. Supervising. Yeah. Which is much, which no. I would consider to be much more. <coughs> That's more legal. That's the end, and we don't want to be supervising. Well, you may not have a choice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, essentially, isn't that what we're really doing? Supervising. So the difference between this group and the library building committee is that. Yeah, right. The library building is advisory to him. Right. This was meant to be something higher up. Okay. I'm not advocating for changing oversight and management to supervise, but I don't have any problem with the phrase oversight and management. Okay. Because it's, it's, it was my expectation that's, that that's what I was being asked to do when I came here. Yeah. Um, it's just my two cents. Now that you're here, we're changing it. <laughs> no, I mean, that's good too. I'm good. Whatever. But when you read that, did you anticipate needing to go to these jobs and do like inspections and right. quality control and that's what the management checking to make sure they're, they're on on schedule or something too? Getting into the weeds. Um, I don't. I mean, everybody has different management styles, right? Tim Cook doesn't doesn't manage putting chips in iPhones, but he's responsible for management of the company. So. I don't think just to say oversight and management, that means you need to walk the site on a periodic basis. I don't think that would be a bad thing. Some of the better building committees that I've been involved with, they, they you know, Weston and Brookline, they, someone takes that project and, it's, yeah. and they go to the meetings. Now, I don't know that we need to be at that level, but, um, you know, I think, you know, from a, a, oversight and management, that's what we're being asked to do. And it, it does involve, it will involve, some level of interaction. Um, and, you know, in, in management oversight, doesn't necessarily mean you're there when you're reviewing the details of schedule. But, but we need to be the ones that ask STV and what the designers are. Um, and I don't want to go on a tangent here, but when I saw um, the presentation on the library, the only things that jumped out at me was there were all these cost overruns and all the consultants' fees were going way up. Okay? And you know, the people on the library board of trustees, great people, everything else, I don't think they're the right people to ask that question. Wait a minute, Mr. Architect, who missed the, yeah. who missed the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the drainage that was available information, to your point, right, right? Hey, Mr. Architect, why are your fees going up 10% when we're paying through the nose to waterproof this basement when the information was readily available to an ad hoc building committee? So I don't think that, you know, like, People on the school committee can ask those questions, and I think that's part of the reason we're formed. And I don't want to, you know, please don't take it the wrong way um, at all. But you know, to just say we're not doing any management and oversight, like ultimately, ultimately, we're responsible to make sure that these projects get built right, uh, built right on time and on budget. You've got, you should really take some town council advice here. Yeah, there's, there's a line you can't cross as a volunteer. Well, it's also, you know, what does the jury I shouldn't think? shouldn't say can't, shouldn't. You know, when, when a man gets killed on one of our jobs mm. and they see that we are responsible for managing the project, what does the jury think that we're doing? Yeah. Have well, you ever been in court on the case? I'd rather, like I'd rather say management and oversight. Than I would rather say monitor. Well, well re review is not a bad one either because it's review can encompass management, oversight, you know, monitor. It can, it can, it can encompass all of those. Yet, candidly, it's gray enough to encompass none of those. I'll ask him. town council. Yeah. 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 Well, I, don't have any, I, don't have any, I wouldn't have any problem following town council's lead yeah. on that either. I'm just... I, I personally don't have any problem with the oversight yeah, management. I, I understand what the intent of the language is, but I think the words oversight and management denote a certain amount of, of physical presence that I don't know that any of us are able to, to provide. You know, and, and not only that, but on a day-to-day -day basis, if the, if, and you know, albeit the cemetery project is a smaller one, but if we end up with a school project or something where, you know, day-to-day -day activities, um, you know, who, who's the first call that they would make, you know, the, the OPM call? Is it us, the one of us? For the ones you mentioned, was it Weston and Brookline? Would a member of the building committee be at a weekly building meeting or every two weeks? Yeah, they'd be at the weekly meetings. Okay, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
during the day, during the day, or at night. They have to be part of during that. During the day, they were. Um, they, they were during the day. They were during work hours. They were generally, you know, um, you know, the guy that was on the, the at the meetings in Weston was clearly retired. Um, so he had the capacity to do that. that, that uh, and I'm not suggesting Thank that. You. I'm not suggesting that. That's, yeah, so it's you. Try to get them all. <laughs> 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 no, 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 hey, I'm still working. We'll put, we'll put it. We'll change the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I do think it's interesting that the other, other all, most of the other bylaws seem to use the word supervise. Oh, which no. sup <laughs> supervise? Well, it's I think that's just. Bad. I think that's no, just that's just as strong an inference that somebody yeah. is physically there. Yeah, oh no, I would, I would, I would it's suggest stronger. it's much, much stronger than um, yeah. management oversight. Yeah, I would agree. It, yeah. is. Um, I would agree. it is. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, all these committees, all these bylaws were written by attorneys who chose that term <laughs> for some reason and probably yeah. thought about the questions that you mm -hmm. asked, John. Mm -hmm. yeah, which, I which I don't, which I don't think we can be sued as. Um, as yes, we can. I mean, anyone can sue anyone. Yes, yes, we can. But because we're not employees, we don't get we don't get yeah. the benefit. Yeah, you are. Yes, we do. Yeah, you we're are. employees. For yeah, but you don't want to be sued. I mean, you, you don't want to give the jury the impression right. that you and were in charge free legal of the protection. job. Actually, you are. Because sure. they they don't know. Yeah, I don't, they I don't, don't know. know. And once they see you are the supervisor, you still get served the manager, in your own mailbox at home. No. Any any yeah. of those words, you will get. Well, they will think your it's your fault when something goes wrong. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been, in, I've, I've been involved in, you know, be peripherally construction litigation. I'm not, I'm not worried about that end of things personally. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you it doesn't bother me. I think it's interesting that the other towns use the word supervise, and I wonder if an attorney would tell us that that's actually better. My gut is I wouldn't want it to say supervise because that's not, a, that's not it, what I signed up for. Right. Um, yeah, I do consider management and oversight something that you can do for the far. Yeah, we've done well, properly. In, in our in the, the process flowchart we put together, we intentionally got rid of management and used administration. Right. So we can administer. We should review and administer right. the projects. Yeah, that's good. Minister could be going out and reviewing what they're doing um, in the field. It's, yeah. It gives us the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I don't think it was our intent to have to go out in the field and, and look at some so much. Maybe. Oh, i got to get the clerk of the works. And the, there may be instances where it's relevant. You know, the program yeah. Might be, yeah. Might, that was no, I, I don't think where we saw well, it. The library is a good example. We were having difficulties getting decisions made by the architect, and they couldn't move forward without those decisions. So I went on site. Yeah, so we asked Nancy. Yeah, and I said, okay, For this free. is what we're doing. Check. And the architect <laughs> the usual. responded, but that's what we <laughs> did, it. so that they could continue <laughs> moving forward, because yeah. there was a lapse in their mm -hmm. communication going on for a little bit. So there are times when you have to that's go. That's good hands-on management. Yeah, mm, right. Yeah. She Make was supervising. Do this. <laughs> oh, green. <laughs> this is what oh, we're doing. Yeah, right, 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 right. It's all about paint colors. No, oh. not in that case. <laughs> they're all, all the decisions are right when they're in the rearview mirror. <laughs> but doesn't your clerk of the works or your the OPM owner, was, OPM, yeah. but they're not Nichols. necessarily architects. Right. So these were design decisions that needed to be made. They were having difficulties getting answers from the architect. And you couldn't wait the 48 hours to no, post the No, they were in the meeting. midst of putting no. the casework in, and the millwork guys were there, and they needed to know what they needed to do. So you got the guys there with all the hammers, and there's no decision. They were waiting. It was too long Does for the them chair to... reel go on that way, or do you have the <laughs> <chair> <laughs> <reel> <laughs> around the shrimp, right? Do you Does continue it... <laughs> the chair reel around? Do you make the... I mean, there was some... So the decision was made by one member of this, That's this right. committee said, yep, yeah, do it yep, this way. do it this way. And yeah. So and, we did. and believe me, the town managers made several decisions over the architect that yeah, has right. made the architect pay more attention. Right. <laughs> Because it, it, yeah. it might be as easy to tell a manager to do. Or, I would or he might call you up and say, hey, they look at this, what do you think? And you might go, yeah, I'd go this way. Well, yeah, I would, I would never make decisions if it dealt with health and safety, welfare, or any right. kind of code issues. These were design yeah. aesthetics. aesthetics. Right. But I, I think, I think no we were cost. trying not, no to cost. Yeah. not to force you to have to go in and you'd be on the job site every day so much. Right. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. The, the that, broader, was just, that was just us. You know, happened evening. to be around and I did it. And I and I don't know that we worded it right when we first described it. And yeah. so. the, in the in the construction world, there's very very specific responsibilities right. based on the language that's used, and that's mm -hmm. that's why some of us are 
very sensitive to the word management because that implies a certain amount of engagement and, and no. responsibility that as a volunteer can't I, I, I can't I can't meet that that criteria yeah I do that during the day so I hate for it. Yeah. was was this original incarnation vetted by town council you know honestly I don't remember which town council it's, um, oh, it was right transition. around when we were changing I think it was the prior town council so the, when I read it I go prior town council well I kind of that, so that's what that's what I mean I, I'm not getting at doubling right you already paid for it once no shouldn't we yeah. uh, perhaps just have town, town council well, go through I'm, this I'm listening to your sort of opinions and then knowing how to answer or ask town council questions well, I'm sure it answers multiple I'm okay multiple. with oversight <laughs> management if the committee thinks review and administer is better I'm fine with that I don't think okay. I would, I don't think I would if it gets to supervise, I'd want, I'd want an attorney to explain to me why it needs to say supervise. If there's okay. some reason that that's better somehow, <laughs> you know, you can't conjure up. Well, whatever you reword it to, so we go to town council before it goes to town meeting anyway. Yeah. And yeah. Bob can ask a specific question about it. Is, is this yeah. word better than that word right. to achieve this concept? Yeah, I think we, we just want that point out. So, so. Okay, yep. somewhere down in. Let's, let's move on. I think we're at the 1.5 million, and we changed the text leading into it. And the next sentence is the permanent building committee's jurisdiction shall not extend to projects of the RMLB. I believe that stays. Uh, permanent building committee shall present all such projects to the finance committee. Now, are we presenting it to them, or are we. This, this is kind of. You shall supervise the presentation. <laughs> Administration. Administration. <laughs> I guess well, I don't have a problem with that because I think the you know not dissimilar from presenting the town meeting, the FinCom's going to want kind of the justification yeah. and, and the analysis of why, why we're making a recommendation that we are, <coughs> and and as a first kind of gatekeeper to that financial decision. So I, I don't I don't have any problems. Especially as an objective board that right. is not the one that's it's proposing it, right. so it's not the. Right. Yeah, you would think FinCom would want want an outside. An outside view of absolutely that, and then how did the board of selectmen get involved in that? Do right. we also want to include them there, or is that then FinCom reports to the board of selectmen? You know, FinCom and anyone else can come if they want. It's FinCom that's your real audience, though. Well, FinCom really it's reports going to, town to the meeting. town meeting, right. right? It's a body of town meeting, right? So that's what I mean. Is that so? If we're going to present projects to FinCom. That's probably like our first level, but then you know. Probably at some point the board of selectmen is going to say, "Well, why can't we have them come to us too?" Or well, why shouldn't we they? certainly only want to have one meeting first. Of all. Well, that's what I mean. Uh, that, well, I guess that's what I was wondering. Is at, at the end of the cemetery building, for example, we're going to come up with a recommendation, and we're going to have a design, and we're going to understand what the cost of building this is. Who's that going to? Is that going I, to FinCom I, first? It's, is it going? It stays to, right here, and we invite people in. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. So we invite yeah. various. We invite FinCom. FinCom. FinCom, school committee, selectmen, whoever wants to come. And that's why I say that that report gets addressed to all the elected boards. You can board yeah. of selectmen, schools. Because it may impact someone else, even right. though it's not their right. building. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're going to do this, then yeah. I can't do that. But eventually it will come to selectmen who will probably sponsor it on the, on the warrant. Let's and they'll look at it and go, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, or this is the dumbest idea we've ever seen in our life, or somewhere in the middle, that continuum. It well, the way this is written, and then we'll, we'll put it on the warrant or not. And they may put it on the warrant and vote zero five to recommend it, or right. five zero to recommend it, or maybe they'll split three two. It, town meeting will then yeah. will then pick at it. Yeah, this yeah. Might we we have the word sponsor up here as if we sponsor, which we don't. I'm sure we don't mm -hmm. sponsor projects. No. Right. And it might be the it might be the board selectman's project. They want to build a new police station. But we old we will not worn out. we will not sponsor it. We, well, it says, so this last sentence on that paragraph says, the Permanent Building Committee shall present all such projects to the Finance Committee for consideration of funding options and shall sponsor and present all such yeah. projects what to What that time. means is, let's say we're going to build a $4 million cemetery garage and borrow money. There would be an article that says we're going to do that, and it's sponsored by the Permanent Building Committee. I see. So the it's warrant. the warrant. It's not the selectman. It's yeah. you. So we would sponsor that article. Yep. Okay. Doesn't sponsor mean that we recommend? Um, sponsoring an sponsor article. means you're bringing it to town meeting for no, a vote. No, we're not sponsoring the project. We're sponsoring the article. 
But even even then, it's not really us. I it's, the, it's the sponsor well, agency. The, the, right? the, 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 the agency, entity. such as the bill, the yeah. uh, cemetery committee, they are the sponsoring agency. But not to town meeting, they're not. They we're, have no standing. Yeah, so I guess the way I see this is that what we're saying <laughs> is we've got this design, we approved because we want it on the warrant, we're, right. we're explicitly saying that we sponsor right. this process and that what we've come up with makes sense to be funded and town meeting. You guys look at this and make a decision. And we put right. the presentation together as the as the advisor to town meeting on whether this is and, a good project. And you're going to FinCom for the financial angle. Right. But they're not going to sponsor the project. They're going right. to give you advice on how to fund it or how to finance it. Uh, whether they agree with whether it should right. be funded or not. But in, that, but in that essence, we're not sponsoring it either. We're, we're You're sponsoring it on the floor of town meeting. Yeah, the article. That's the, the article. The article. That's the, the article. way the thing is written and no, the project. Not the project. Yeah, but you, you go and you say, well, all right, this is structurally and mechanically and statutorily sound. It's not the wetland. It's right. It's not a 10-story high-rise. It's going to need an elevator. And it's, whereas FinCom comes and goes and looks, well, what's it going to cost? Or could I right. build something different? Could I let cemetery guys all just stay outdoors in the rain and, <laughs> right, right. and save money? And they go, well, no, that doesn't make sense. It's worth spending the money to, to right. do this. Or, and I would assume finance committee would also look at it in terms of how it fits within the overall budget. Because oh, yeah. I would hope that's what their job is and say, yeah. no, we can't do it this year. I'll have to wait another year. Or right. But you might explain why it's a $3 million garage, not a $500,000 garage, right. because you need to sprinkle it and you need to do this and you right. need to do that. Right. You have to provide restrooms for the workers and you need to have you know, the equipment bay and the fireproof. And you could legitimately, hopefully not often, come to town meeting with two options and say we're sponsoring there's two solutions we really don't know which one's best either one could work one's 500,000 one's three million if you want to do well but you can't really do that right because you need enough down vote you need a yes no vote right so um, yeah but you could have motions on each one on the floor so you know I can't really picture how you couldn't figure out those two options yourselves but it could happen mm -hmm. where you're just so indifferent I mean, you might be agnostic to say whether to rebuild a new police station where the old one is or build one a block away. Or you might say, hey, if we build one where the other one is, there's, this can go wrong and this can give you gotchas and this you're going to have to temporarily do. And it's going to be a real disaster, whereas you build it a block away, it's going to just be wham, bam, piece of cake. And, you know, it's depending what what you found, you know. And one way that you'd say, hey, it, doesn't really matter. Either one works well. You might say, "Hey, it makes a whole lot more sense to build it here than there." And town meeting and others would then weigh that. So do we just get rid of the word sponsor? No, I think that's a legal term with town meeting. Well, because we can still present such projects to town meeting. But we're sponsoring just the article, not. We're sponsoring the article, not. not but we're presenting. Project. Does presenting also mean sponsor yeah. in the, in the context of the sponsoring agency is defined in paragraph. Three, uh, hold three, as the cemetery committee in this case. That's that's, just, as the that's only for the convenience of the bylaw. Bring it to town meeting. That has nothing to do with town agency. meeting. Right. I think we're the sponsoring agency that brings it to town meeting, and, right. and it yeah. will only go onto the town meeting warrant if we agree that it needs to right. be there. So we yeah. have to come to some conclusion that Could this project is worth going forward, and that's why we're sponsoring it to town meeting. They. That's all we're doing. We're just right. saying. We think this is valid. You guys decide. So, like, but I guess if we're writing a report, the agency is not us. Yeah. So if we're with, just, for this. Yeah, right. so just follow the process through. If if we if we are asked to evaluate a project by a sponsoring agency, we write a report back to that sponsoring agency as well as all the elected boards, town manager, etc. Why isn't the sponsoring agency sponsoring an article based on our report that we can present on a town meeting? I, I don't. I don't want us to be the one. Res like mm. it, it, in a in a vacuum, I don't want people to look and say, "It was your guys' idea to build a new cemetery garage yeah, because you sponsored the article, yeah. not knowing any of the background of what's transpired to date." Well, that, that's so a fair can, question yeah. to ask when uh, you get you know people in the meeting in a couple of months. So uh, you know, just that's if true. this so if this walks itself through, we end up with an OPM with a solid feasibility analysis and a design, a designer and a design. We end up with a final site with a budget that we've vetted, we're comfortable with, soft costs included. We have a dollar value to go to town.
town meeting with, we can write a report and make a presentation that says, here are all the steps we went through, here's everything we evaluated, here's everything that was analyzed, here were all the different options we entertained, here's what we recommend based on all the information available to us. What I don't want to have happen is for 95% of town meeting that wasn't in this room tonight to go, who are these guys that want to build a cemetery building? <laughs> Because we are quote unquote the sponsoring agency. Right. I think it needs to, you know, if it's the board of selectmen that are or the you know, whoever technically who is who would the sponsor be. So the board of selectmen sponsor an article based on a report by the building committee and we present that report. Gotcha. Right, we present that's, on their that's behalf. what I I think these the sponsoring agency we deal with in the front end should be the sponsoring agency of the article at the back end. I agree. I agree. We so, simply create a report and present that report. Right. So going back in time a little bit, a few years ago, the school committee yeah. sponsored rebuilding the high school for 50 or $60 million. If that was happening in the future, you'd rather the school committee sponsored the rebuild of the high school for $60 million than you sponsored the rebuild of the high school no, we for $60 million. Not us. Not us. Right. See, that's the thing. We, we are not an originator of projects. Or a $2 million cemetery right. garage. We, yeah, so in this, this and you, you may not be able to see it, but this flow chart that we put together when we were you know, newly minted, we, you know, proposed project, item number one, originates from the three elected boards, schools, library, or selectmen, the sponsoring agency. Mm -hmm. we, we're not just, we're not going to, we're not going to divine projects on our own. We're not going to do, you know, we're not going to be able to read the pulse of the town and say, hey, they need a new cemetery garage. They're really desperate. Yeah, I, none of us would know that. But I by the same token, the finance committee doesn't like sponsor the, the rebuilding of this hypothetical high school. It just says, yeah, this makes sense financially. No, it doesn't make sense financially. Right. But it well, and not only that, but to maintain the objectivity of this entity, we shouldn't have a vested interest in any of these types of projects, right? We, you want us to be, you want us to be the voice of reason on the construction experience that's looking at something from an objective perspective. And making those decisions and evaluations and the and the and coming up with a recommendation. Yeah. And I don't recall now specifically why we said sponsor. I think it's because you did imagine these guys would be the ones to sponsor the article for the warrant. I don't think that should be the case. I think I mean, that yeah, I'm not, not saying what's right or wrong. Right. That's what. That's I'm what should we anticipate you presenting about it from a I'm okay with presenting building construction yeah. merit okay point with presenting. View. Because we don't, we couldn't care less whether it was a new cemetery garage. We don't care. Yeah. We don't need it. Right. They need it. Right. But you can look at it and go, yeah, it doesn't make sense to build the build the ten stories high because it's gonna be an awful long ramp for a bucket load mm -hmm. to come down. Um, building committee shall present all such projects on behalf of the sponsoring agency to town meeting. Okay. I knew you'd remember that. Yeah, so Brad, so oh, so moving around. Maybe All right. Brad, so Brad, Brad, Brad's got language in there that I, that I like. All right, so the Permanent Building Committee shall present all such projects on behalf of the sponsoring agency to town meeting for its consideration and approval of funding. Because up above, we define what the sponsoring agency is. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Done. Sold. So who sponsors the article? Sponsoring. Sponsoring agency. agency. Sponsoring agency. Sponsoring, okay, whoever it is. Whoever brought it to us. Is that like logistically challenging from a, I don't, I don't think so. No, it's right. just it's different than how it was written, but I think it's fine. I mean, we're still presenting, it's just I mean we can still present to FinCom too. We don't have yeah. to necessarily take them out of that loop. Well it's part of town meeting, right? Isn't FinCom no, kind of it'd be a separate it'd be a separate yeah, presentation separate. though. Before we present to FinCom well before town meeting, and actually, I, I wouldn't think you'd get a sponsored article unless FinCom was. I mean, I guess technically you could, but if it doesn't, they have FinCom voted against things it. before. You, you could. What will happen is you'll, you'll put an article on town meeting and do X, and FinCom will look at it and will vote on it, and they might vote 9 0, they might vote 0 9. Occasionally, they'll be split. I think the question on whether to build a water treatment plant or go all on WRA, I believe uh, FinCom was split. Yeah, that was probably I don't split. recall the exact numbers. But wouldn't the sponsoring agency have the better relationship with FinCom to Not pull necessarily. That <laughs> and, and, and you also no, I think FinCom wants Switzerland in the room. You know, they're Switzerland and you're, so are you. But we would sit with the sponsoring agencies so that if the FinCom has questions that the sponsoring agency can answer that we can't. Well, they'll, they'll answer the questions why they need a building. 
you answer the questions why this is the right building or the right location. You can't decide whether someone really needs a new building if it's programmatic reasons. Great. The other the other bylaws don't seem to uh, don't seem to get into that very much, mm -hmm. but even the guys that are supervising are proposing. <laughs> <laughs> They're too busy supervising and overseeing. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so that, that okay. last sentence now reads, Permanent Building Committee shall present on behalf of the sponsoring agency to town meeting for consideration of approval of funding. Okay. Do we, uh, do we want to call it quits for the night? Yes. Um, we have... I think you've hashed it out. I think, well, I think, I think there's... Well, there's the there's temporary more. member... I don't know if there's eight, day, eight calendar days of positive yeah. vote. Yeah, that's, general, that's, I don't that's know. probably silly. <laughs> I don't know if we do we need this out of my us or... No. What, what was the old third paragraph? Needs a lot of work, in my opinion. Yeah. Which one? Half temporary the members. The one that starts with temporary members. Yeah, yeah. you can't move. I agree. There's a lot of... <laughs> yeah. uh, so, next meeting, so... Keep keep looking at it, keep chewing on it, keep making notes. If you want to send me notes, I can put them in this file. I will send out. When you do that, I'll send the bylaw and the notes to town council and just say, what do you think? Okay. But if you have more notes, more updates, send them to me. I'll send out the just the updated, highlighted version that we've done tonight so that you can ruminate on it. Um, Monday 919 is our next our next gathering. And we've got basically two meetings, uh, the 19th and October 3rd, to, to finalize a draft. And then 11-7 will be a joint meeting with the bylaw committee to, to finalize or to at least be able to speak in person with those folks so that any, any final information can be exchanged. Um, and then any OPM business that arises between now and then we'll we'll deal with either just at our next regularly scheduled meeting or we'll try to figure out something to do with it. that's mm -hmm. you know, yeah we don't know enough right now to make any sense of that any other business so if you could get me uh stuff by the end of next week the latest, that would give me enough time before the 19th that plus any comments there you go. <clears throat> motion to adjourn second all in favor Aye. Aye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.